Hello everyone. The day we've all been waiting for. You're welcome. My name is Tokwe and on behalf of the Elevation Church London, I want to welcome you to find your voice. Um, I'm also welcoming everyone who's watching us online. Um, the prayer is that your life remains changed with every word that comes out tonight in Jesus' name. Could we please bow our heads for a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you. The day is finally here. We say thank you. We thank you because you've gone ahead of us. We thank you for the power that would come out of the mouth of every speaker. We thank you for every life that's represented here. And we thank you because today would be a good reference point in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, a few housekeeping rules. Um, we have the toilets, um, two on the mezzanine level and two by the registration um, desks, one to the left and one to the right. And we have um, three fire exits, one to my left, the other to my right, and one up there. Um, leading us in worship tonight is an internationally acclaimed gospel singer. He's a songwriter and a worship leader. He has released several EPs and singles, all available on popular streaming platforms. And I'd like you to please join me to welcome for Labino. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be here? I can, I can hear you. Are you excited to be here? Amen. Hallelujah. Just high five somebody on your left, on your right. Uh, tell them it's good to see you. It's good to be here. Seated next to you. Amen. God is good, and we're just going to worship him for a few minutes, if you don't mind. Can we please rise to our feet and just honor God this afternoon. Let's just honor him. Honor him. Just in your own words, tell him how grateful you are. Just tell him how much you love him, how much you adore him. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead. In your own words, begin to bless his name. In your own words, begin to thank him. In your own words, begin to honor him. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your name. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless your name. Father, we thank you for who you are. You are amazing, you are amazing, Lord. Go ahead in your own words, thank Him. You are amazing, Jesus. You are amazing, Jesus. Father, we honor You. Yes, we honor You. Come on, lift your voice. We bless Your name, Jesus. We bless Your name, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. You worthy, you worthy, Lord. Yeah. And I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Can you lift your voice and sing it out? I searched all over, I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. I looked high and low. Still couldn't 
find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Come on, lift your voice and sing. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. No one like you, Lord. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Sing it out. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Oh. Nobody greater. One more time in the room. Sing nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Yeah. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Can you give him praise if indeed there's no one greater than him? Hallelujah. I need to hear you all clap. Clap your hands like you mean it. Amen. Hallelujah. So hold on a minute. Let me just teach you guys real quick. Um, this song is called Forever, and I'll just teach you the words. It says, if I had a thousand tongues, if I had a million words to say, I would give it all right now. You deserve it all. If I had a thousand tongues, if I had a million words to say, I would give it all right now. You deserve it all. And your part is, I will bless your name with everything that's within me. I will give you praise forever. Y'all sing it out. I will. I will bless yeah. your name with everything that's within me. I will give you praise one more time forever i will bless it i will give you praise forever are you ready let's go come on clap your hands everybody Hey, 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 hey. Here we go. Hey, wave it from side to side now. Wave it from side to side now. If I had a million words to say, hey, hey, I would give it all right. You deserve it all. Come on, lift your hand. Sing the I will bless. Say, I will bless your name with everything that I will within keep me. you. I will give you, give you praise. Forever, I will bless, I will bless your name hey, with, with everything that's within me. I will give you praise. One more time, I will bless, I will bless your name with everything that's within me. I will give you praise forever. I will bless, I will bless your name. Everything that's within me, Are you I will ready? give you praise hey. forever. Everybody wave your hands like this, yeah. In the room now, hey. in the room now. Everybody, come on, wave your hands from side to side. Hey. Wave your hands from side to side. Wave your hands from side to side. Whoa. Track to say, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. You say, break it down, our God, our God. I can't hear you in the room. Our God is an awesome God.
Hey, hey. One more time, everybody. Our God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven up with wisdom. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven up with wisdom. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Here we go. He reigns. He reigns. Yes, he reigns. He reigns. Yes, he reigns. He reigns. Yes, he reigns. 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 He
go ahead and honor him. Go ahead and honor him. Go ahead and honor him. You reign, you reign. Oh, death cannot hold you down. And you are the reason. You're the reason, King. A seated in majesty. Oh, you are the reason. Yeah. And there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart as you do and I could search you all eternity and find there is none like one more time there is none like you there is none there is none like you no one else can touch. No, no one else can touch my, my heart as like you do. And I could search, I could search through all eternity, Lord. And if I there is not like One more time, it has lifted I Sing, there is no like you. There is none like you, and no one else can touch my life. No one else can touch my heart as you do. I could search through all. I can search through all. It's eternity. Come and lift your voice and we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Uh, sing, you are Alpha and you are Alpha.
to be for there's no one else like you who is faithful ever true and all my love my Is a testimony. Oh, 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 only you are. Only you are. Only you are wonderful. Only you are wonderful. It's in the room. It's in the room. There's no one else. For there's, there's no one else like you. Who is faithful? Who is faithful? faithful. Hey, I'm hey, a no si Thank him. Your life is a testimony. My life is a testimony. Come on, open up your mouth. Sing it out. He's a testimony. I'm a testimony. I'm a testimony. Oh, I'm a testimony. I'm a testimony And so I lift you I Yahweh, Yahweh Yes, I lift you I Yahweh, Yahweh And be glorified it up, come on, Yahweh, Yahweh. you were.
Yes, we lift you high. Yahweh. That's his name. Come on. We lift you high. Come on. Yahweh. Yahweh. You are high, Yes, we lift you up. Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you up. Yahweh, Yahweh. Come on, open up your mouth and just sing in the spirit if you can. Open up your mouth, it's in the room. Open up your mouth and just honor Yahweh. Honor the great I am. You're highly lifted up. You're highly lifted up. You're highly lifted up. You're highly lifted up. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your heart, oh, now Yahweh. Wherever you have, hearing the voice of my voice this afternoon, can I just have you wave your hands to Jesus? He is Yahweh. He's the Most High God. Can you just wave your hands to Him? I want you to let Him know, let Him know that you're so grateful to Him, that you love Him. I want you to let Him know this afternoon. Just wave your hands to Jesus. Wherever you are, I want you to just say something that lets the Lord know today that you love Him, that you appreciate Him, that you worship Him. I want you to open your mouth and just say, God, I worship you. I'm thankful that I am here today experiencing find your voice 2023 i wanted to open your mouth and let jesus know that you are grateful for the opportunity to be a participant here today to be a partaker of the things that god has put in stock for us i wanted to say god i just give you worship can you open your mouth and just say father i just thank you i give you worship i do not take for granted your grace upon my life i wanted to just say god of heaven and earth i am just so 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 glad and so excited that i am your child father we bless your name Lord, we thank you. You're the giver of life. You're the owner of everything. We just give you worship today. We know that you're the one who is giving us our voices. We know that you're the one who is amplifying our voices. Because the Bible says it's in you that we move, that we live, and we have our beings. And so, Father, we just bless your holy name. We worship you today. We say be exalted in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just yield this event unto you today. Apollo's wa Paul planted Apollo's water, but you are the God of increase. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that this will be an experience of increase for every person who is participating. We thank you, Lord, because today is a day of increase. It's a day of upliftment. It's a day of, 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 of contacting your glory. It's a day of receiving your grace. It's a day of being empowered afresh. It's a day of just encountering grace. It's a day of revelation. It's a day of divine instructions. We thank you, Jesus, because we know that you're here with us. And not only are you here with us, we know that we are beneficiaries of grace. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. All right, so find your voice 2023. If you're really excited to be here, you want to put your hands together for Jesus? And you want to give God a shout of praise? You want to give him a shout of praise? I want you to give God a shout of praise. Give God a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So for those who are in the room, you may please have your seat. If you're in the room, please take your seat. And of course, if you're joining us, wherever you're joining us from, I want to say a big welcome, you know, to everybody today. Um, thank you to everyone um, who's made it into the room. I also want to say thank you, you know, to everybody who's joining online, whatever part of the world you're joining from. I want to say a very warm welcome to you. We're going to acknowledge you, you know, sometime later in the event. Uh, but I first want to just say, this is Find Your Voice 2023. Do you want to put your hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many people say, what is, what is, what is find your voice? You know, I'm, I'm not dumb. You know, I can speak. I have a voice. It's loud enough. You know, yours can even be like a baritone like mine, right? Yeah, but what it is is this. You know, God has packaged this. You know, we're doing this under, under divine instruction. And what God has packaged and wants to do in our lives, you know, is to, is to inspire us and set us on fire. 
you know, for significant accomplishments and achievements, right, in multiple dimensions of life, okay? And that is what I wanted to hold on to. So I want to say welcome to you. Can I ask you to please be polite enough and say hello to your neighbor? All right, so if you're in the room, I want to say hello to your neighbor. If you're online, I want you to also go online and type in the comment section and just say good afternoon and say hello to everybody, whatever time it is where you are. I want to say hello. You're welcome to Find Your Voice 2023. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so once again, thank you very much, you know, for making time out to be a part of this. God has a lot in store for us, you know, um, for us to, to benefit from. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fully loaded day, all right? Um, there are lots of things that are going to happen. We have music ministrations that are going to inspire and bless us, you know, and lead us in worship, all right? Um, and of course, we have amazing, amazing speakers, all right, um, that we're going to learn from. Um, we are going to inspire us, all right? And of course, we've also harvested um, stories of people who have gone through um, uh, uh, stages of life where they have found their voices, people like you and I, right? And we're going to be hearing some of their stories to also inspire us, you know, um, and of course, to, to give us insight into the things that we need to do about finding our voice. And you see, finding your voice really is about making impact, right? That's what it is. It's about living a life of impact. Whatever level we are at right now, you know, whether you're just starting out or you've done significant things already, you know, there is always room for more. And so find your voice 2023 is about significant impact. Now, so what we're doing is we're streaming online. All right. Um, so if you if you're here um, in person and you know someone who would have loved to be here but they can't make it, all right, just send them a message. Refer them to our YouTube channel, the Elevation Church London, all right. Um, just send them, send them over there. They will be able to participate, okay. And of course, as well, um, we want you to engage online as well. People at home and those in the room, if you can take pictures, if you can um, 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 and pass out comments online about the experiences that you're having, the things that you're learning, all right? And um, we have our hashtags to be displayed on the screen right now for you to be able to engage them. Every time you do something online, just sort of tag us so that we can track all of these and be able to, again, let other people see what God is doing in them. So how many people are ready today, you know, to find their voices? How many people are ready? Okay. How many people are ready to go from one level of impact to another? Okay, how many people are ready to go from one level of influence to another? Can I have a shout in the house this afternoon? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, um, interact with or sort of just watch the videos, you know, of two people um, whom God has, has settled and who God has blessed and given the grace, you know, to experience impact in finding their voice in the UK. Um, and then we're going to watch their videos, learn from their stories, and then after then we'll carry on with the event. All right, good. Okay, so just pay attention, please. I encourage you at every point in time, take notes. God is going to be speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is going to be inspiring you. You know, whether it's when we're singing, worshiping, watching a video, anything, whatever it is, you know, inspiration will come at different points, all right? And I want you to pay attention to the instructions that God is going to be passing across you. So please uh, make sure that you engage, that we are active participants, all right, whether in the room or out of the room um, online, all right? So thank you very much. God bless you. Um, we're going to watch these two videos now. Um, see you later. Hello everyone, my name is Ayodele Abuloware. I'm a consultant pediatrician and a medical advisor for children in foster care in London. I moved to the UK in um, 2009, 14 years ago, you know, as a young, newly married uh, you know, medical doctor. And I was a little bit confused I because I, I had many aspirations and I felt that medicine was not going to allow me to fully explore my my multifaceted self and I remember reaching out to someone there you know who I considered a mentor at that stage of my life and he had led a, a, a foundation that I had served in and he knew me quite well so I asked him I said what do I do I feel like quitting this medicine because I'm worried about not being able to use my gifts my talents and you know work in my passion and he gave me very valid advice and said you know what committing to a profession with its rigors and demands like medicine will help you to hone your skills and develop yourself and it will help you to you know grow in your capacity and your potential so I went ahead and decided that you know what I will go on with this medicine and I thank God that you know I've been able to you know pursue that career and reach you know what we'll call a, a successful uh, phase in my career so I remember that I um, also you know had to apply for the soft 
specialist program because I then decided that I wanted to be a pediatrician. But I had to pray and get conviction because there were other options. You know, most people around me wanted to be a GP and it was because it looked like the, the path of least resistance. But you know what? I prayed about it, got the conviction and decided to go out for it. But I started to think now as I share my story that, you know, everybody's story might be different. You might not be a doctor or want a career in medicine, but the principles are the same. One thing I, I was able to do was not to dump down my aspirations. I went for it. You know, there were not you know, uh, many positive or, you know, people doing what I wanted to do in, in, in my field, the way I wanted to do it. But you know what? I decided to go for it all the same. And one of the things I did was to take risks. I remember when I was putting in the application, you had to sort of like rank the jobs, you know, and choose, you know, jobs across the nation. And the truth is that I decided that I was only going to choose jobs in London only because I only wanted to train in, in London, West London and Central London. It seemed very stupid and foolish, but I went for it and decided that I was going to take that risk. And I'm really grateful to God that I got my very first choice and I was able to train for the eight year long program. One of the challenges I had was I realized that, you know, my multifaceted self, my multi-talented self, I'd come from an, an, uh, an era in university where, you know, I was leading an organization, a voluntary organization. I was a pastor. I had a baking business. I had a jewelry business. So, so many arms of my of my life. And I was worried that medicine as a jealous career was not going to allow me to express myself and fully develop my skills. And you know, obviously my giftings as well. But you know what? The way it went was that I started to get opportunities for service. I remember being asked to be a you know member of the advisory board and governing council of an international Christian organization for women and I wondered how I was going to manage it with the 12 hour long shifts I was doing night shifts and very huge demands in my career but you know what I went for it I took the step and served and you know subsequently I was later asked to you know be a chairperson for an internationally recognized you know organization uh, for you know women and leaders and I'm serving there and I still serve on the on the chair you know now you know currently but you know what I'm trying to say that that's why how busy it was service was the pathway to hone my skills, to sharpen my capability. It taught me resilience and showed me what I was capable for. And I'm really grateful for the numerous opportunities I've had to sell. As my journey progressed, you know, I had challenges. There's no path of significance where there's no challenge. I had a professional exam, the final of four professional exams I had to write. And unfortunately, I filled that exam. I tried it over and over again and continued to fill that exam. And I really hit rock bottom, literally hit rock bottom. And what I did was I sought God and I asked, should I continue on this path? Or do you want me to, you know, pivot to something else? But I had the, you know, the nudging to stay on that track. But one thing God did was to give me the gift of um, bring valuable people into my life. And it kind of brought someone who evolved to become my mentor to kind of provoke me to greatness and, and get me out of that rut that I was in. You know, and I thank God because that worked out. He gave me a support system in my husband, also in very high achieving and people of faith who are my very good friends who continue to speak life into me. Um, you know, and I, I dare say that it ended in praise and I succeeded in the end. Well, thank you very much for letting me share my story. I had a wonderful time sharing. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jerry Ejikeme. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of Sochitel UK. Uh, Sochitel is a digital payments platform that provides digital solutions to banks and financial institutions, mainly around Africa, but we're hoping to spread around the world. Um, I came to the UK first when I was eight years old um, and later did went back to Nigeria to do a law degree where I was born. Um, came back in 1995 and uh, have been in the UK ever since building my career and business. My 
faith plays a strong part and a sense of bringing solution. A sense of bringing solution to Africa. So uh, being a diasporan, um, the idea was what things can we bring that will make my life and the life of people I knew who had uh, friends and family back home in Africa, what could make their everyday interaction with back home easier digitally? What we mean by digitally is essentially over a mobile phone, um, over e-commerce, and uh, that's really the driving force of what we do. And we don't just look at uh, Nigeria, where I'm from, but we look at the whole of Africa because I think it's a shared experience for Africans abroad and back home. <laughs> The journey from a startup, um, essentially I left a job with BT, um, uh, my last salary and started the business, it's very difficult. I think one of the um, biggest anchors for my life is having a sense of purpose. Having a, and, and that's where my faith played a strong role because I believed there was a reason for what I was doing. So it wasn't just about making money, it was I'm meant to be doing this. So even when it didn't look as if it would succeed, and believe me, we went through over 10 years of loss making before we hit the uh, proverbial hockey stick. But um, in those times, you have a sense of, I'm trying to get somewhere. There is a place, a journey, and a destination um, whose uh, maker and guide is the Almighty God. There is always a next level, um, and I think that's, that's the thing of of being a man that believes in destiny is you you have a calling to keep rising and i see whatever i'm doing as a platform first and foremost to uh, support my community but then also to be an example to the up and coming so the next journey is quite unashamedly is to try and go again and see if you can build a global business that has reached an impact all around the world and um, the money comes up for that. Praise God. Okay, let me see where the lights are in my eyes. Hi everyone, good evening. Hope you're having a lovely, lovely time. Um, and hope you also connected with both videos. I think two big things that I took out of it for me was praying until you get conviction, and sometimes the next journey is really just to start again. So I hope everyone you know, took at least one thing out of both videos. Okay, next I have a very simple task for everyone in the room. Um, we're gonna have a Slido link come up on screen now. Um, we have a link and a link as well. So please get out your phones, very quick task. It's gonna take 10 seconds, I promise. Please scan the barcode or use the link and just pop in one word of what finding your voice means to you. One word. One word. It's gonna, we're going to share the, um, the results on the screen, but one word of what finding your voice means to you. I can see everyone has their phones out. Even my pastors have their phones out. So this is a very serious task. One word of what finding your voice means to you. And the media team, please, if you can start sharing the results. Thank you very much. Okay, I see purpose, so a lot of people say purpose is what finally their voice means to them. Let's see what else. Impact, walking in destiny, influence. Well, purpose is the big one, so a lot of people are typing in purpose. What else? Clarity, confidence. Okay, direction. Wow. Thank you very much for participating. I hope the people online are also participating as well. We're sharing the results here. Thank you so, so much, everyone. 
Uh, up next, we're going into our speaker sessions for the evening. Um, and this, this, this part of the event is very special to me because I'm thankful for the opportunity to bring up someone that I personally know, respect, and every single time that I hear her speak, it's always a new experience for me, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, we're gonna have the media team now display a video introduction for no one else but Mrs. Ibuko Awashika. A catalyst for change, whose unwavering commitment to excellence has left an indelible mark on the world stage. Ibuka Washika's influence extends beyond borders as a leader of many worlds. She embodies the perfect fusion of knowledge and leadership. Her role as chairman and founder of the Chair Center Group has transformed the furniture and security industry in Nigeria, showcasing her prowess as a boardroom luminary. But her leadership isn't confined to national borders. Ibuka Washika's reach extends to international platforms, where she contributes her expertise to initiatives like the UK G7 Impact Task Force and the Global Steering Group for Impact Investing. This trailblazer has earned accolades, such as the Forbes Woman Africa Chairperson Award and the International Friendship Award from the Queen of Spain, solidifying her legacy as one that continues to grow. Beyond her business endeavors, Ibuka Washika is an author, educator, and advocate for the next generation. Her initiatives, such as the Ibuka Washika Leadership Academy and the 360 Executive Masterclass, inspire and empower thousands to achieve their full potential. Her philanthropic spirit shines through the Christian Missionary Fund, which impacts lives through medical, educational, and relief efforts across Nigeria, showcasing her heart for service and compassion. In addition to her remarkable business achievements, she has made her mark in media and entertainment. From Netflix's citation to producing God Calling, she uses these platforms to engage in purposeful storytelling that shapes culture and inspires positive change. Yet, amidst her multitude of roles, Ibuka Washika maintains a balanced life. She's not only a leader, but also a mother and a wife to Abiodun Washika, serving as a source of inspiration for her three sons. Please welcome Thank you very much. It's uh, definitely my pleasure to be here. Uh, before you sit, just one thing. If I ask a favor with uh, Pastor Godman's permission, I want you to celebrate for me someone who taught me everything I know in ministry. You know, and before I do anything, that was one thing that in my heart I would like to do for doing this. So if you've never met or seen or listened to my pastor before, but my pastor for 31 years was Pastor Daniel Taiwo Dukoya, who went to be with the Lord in the last uh, week and a half or so. So if you just put your hands together and celebrate the legacy of a great man. A teacher of teachers, pastor of pastors, you know, a humble, simple, loving, a father, a husband, a brother, an amazing human being, a lover of Jesus to the core, one whose life was totally and completely sold out to the Lord. That is who my pastor was and will always be, and his legacy will definitely outlive him. I'm a seed of his labor, so I know that I'm part of his legacy. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I'd like to thank Pastor Godman. He's my friend and my brother, he and his wife. And uh, Pastor Tunji, thank you for all the work, and thank you for inviting me. And there was a matter of was I gonna counsel or not at the last minute with uh, what happened. But you know, my pastor taught us one thing, and that's what I said to Pastor Godman when he called me and said he was wondering whether I was going to be, be here. I remember very well when I was telling Pastor Twinji the story when Pastor Bimbo died. You know, we, we had gone to call him when I think he was, uh, Tinubu was still governor, it was Tinubu and a few other people who came to break the news to my pastor. And as he heard, he went on his knees, face down, and started worshiping the Lord. It was his way 
of responding to the news. And this was a Wednesday or so. On the Thursday, we went to church to handle our service. And on Sunday, my pastor insisted he was going to come to church. He said, look, the work of God doesn't wait. It's, you have to keep working because there are people's lives at stake. And so when he asked me, the only example I knew that I'd watched and the way I'd been raised is that the work of God doesn't stop. Every single day counts. And so I said, don't worry, I'll be there. So here I am. So let's make it count. Okay. So I hope we'll all make, make sure it's worth it. Because the reality is we're all on a timer. That's just the truth. You know, if you take your phone and you switch on the clock. No, I'm looking for the stopwatch. I'm pressing the wrong thing. My brain isn't functioning very well, but it will. Um, where's my stopwatch? Okay, I found it. Sorry, guys. You know, when you press start, that's your life starting. The entirety of your life is on a timer. And it's to the last second. Which is why when you see a birth certificate, it always has time of birth to the last second. And if you've ever seen a death certificate before, I've lost both of my parents, so I have an idea what that looks like. You would see that a death certificate has time of death to the very last second. What that tells you is life is time. Your, what you call your life is just the time you have been given. And what that should teach you is never to waste a minute of it and not allow other people waste your time. Because when you think they're wasting time, they're actually wasting your life. And you really don't want to do that. It's also why the work of God cannot stop. Because every minute that is lost cannot be recovered. When the time is gone, you can use another time to do something else or do something you should have been doing in the time before, but you're not recovering the time you lost. Because it's irrecoverable. And that is why when we're talking about you finding your voice. It's really about you understanding that you have a deadline for the assignment. It's not an inexhaustible resource. It's not a, um, an endless program. You're on a timer and you must deliver. Why? Because you're going to account to the guy who sent you. When people die, their timer stops. But if you're still alive, yours is still running. So don't get carried away also in grief. Why? Because you're losing time. And it matters. And that's something I just want to leave with you. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you. For we have gathered unto you, unto your glory, and unto your name. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will come into the midst of us and you would minister life to us through your word that at the end of this day father the purpose for which we have gathered exceedingly and abundantly above that you will do for us thank you father for in jesus name we have prayed now for each and every one of us there's a reason that we exist. I've always looked at life as take this screen, cut it up into different tiny pieces. Call this screen the totality of God's agenda, and he does have one. And then consider that his total agenda is cut up into different assignments that he gives to different people. Pastor Godman has been roaming from country to country 
city to city in England, not for fun, because traveling is tedious. It's a large part of my life. And honestly, some days I wish I could just close my eyes and turn up wherever it is I want to go to. I'm waiting for that transportation mechanism <laughs> so that I can miss the flying time, but get to all the places, but not have to go through planes or airport or anything like that. The reality is every piece of that God's agenda is placed in different individuals. You are a part of a total agenda. You have a responsibility to deliver on your part of the agenda. Why? If we cut this up into pieces and we're able to put everything else together, but this one piece here is missing, this piece here is missing, the all there is missing. Will it look right? Why? Because there's some missing links. Now, so when we're talking about you finding your voice, it's about you finding your part in God's agenda. It's about you finding the portion of God's calling that is yours. It's about understanding that God is not in the business of wasting resources. That God will not make sure you are born because there are a lot of wasted sperms and eggs. And there are many children that die in the hospital and never leave. And some come through a few years down the line and they die along the path. But you're here. You're alive. You're well. You might think you're not in the best of your opportunity. But you better think twice about who doesn't even have what you have. Because whatever it is that you have been given, it is for a reason. And ultimately, God has an agenda. And if you've signed up as a child of God, what you've done is to join the Lord's army. The army of any nation fights a battle to win, but only when each member of the army is fighting right in their own portion of the, of the battle. When you watch all of these Ukraine things, sometimes you see all these young tech boys, whoever thought they would be part of the war. But what did they decide to do? To apply their own knowledge to start creating all sorts of, what do they call that thing that flies up? drones. Now they've created the sea drone that's sinking ships without anybody noticing. Why? Because at a time and a season, the knowledge they had that was not thought required effectively for war became an available tool that was needed in a time of distress. And they rose to the occasion by applying themselves to create solutions to give their country some advantage. Which country do you belong to? Somebody answer me. Yes. If you're a child of God, you're part of a kingdom. If you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, if you're a citizen of the kingdom of God assigned to the earth, there's a portion of the agenda of God upon the face of the earth that is yours. Are you walking in it? Your voice is not just about speaking. It's about finding your place. And sometimes, your place might seem mundane to some others. But who cares what anybody thinks? You know all that is important? Is that you... Find your place, you're comfortable in the place of your calling, and you have the grace and the ability to walk with your God to deliver in that space. Not compared to another's, because you have no business with anybody else's. All we need for the picture to be complete is that each and every one of us owns our part. We own it completely that we become totally sold out to it, 
The Bible says it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that will show us mercy. The Bible says whatsoever you put your hands to do, you will prosper at it. Which means, what is God asking you to do? Just get going with what I have called you to do. Leave the perfection and the results that will come out of it to me. That's what God is saying. You are not responsible for the results. You are responsible for acting on the assignment. And then let the guy who has the responsibility, let him make it happen. What makes me fearless in most cases? Because sometimes, how do you, aren't you afraid of doing this? Me. For what? Silver and gold. He has. The cattle on a thousand hills, they belong to him. Everything that you require, the ones I do not even know where is hidden, according to the Bible, God knows where the treasures are hidden. The Bible says he's the one that is able to make a man against his will to serve the purpose of God to serve me. He rules in the affairs of men. What is your part? Answer the question and make the commitment of what you have been called to and how do you take on that call and rise to it. Mother Teresa was in the corner of the poorest of the poorest parts of the world. But she only answered the call to care for another. She didn't have the money, but she had the heart. She had the ability to care for the uncareable. The most, have you been to India before? If you want to see what, I didn't understand what poverty was until I went to India. No, no, it's true. Poverty has a smell. When you get in there, you will smell it. No, no, I'm not joking. I used to think Oshodi was bad. When I went to India, I came back, I respected Oshodi. <laughs> it's true. But I think that even all the places that I saw that made me feel like that, they were not as bad as the places that Mother Teresa lived and cared for others. But in answering that call, as she felt led by the Lord, she became a global human being. Every resource she needed for the work was delivered to her where she was by the entire world system. The richest of the richest, corporates and individuals, sought to fund the work. Now, Mother Teresa has been dead for how long? Google it. That's your problem, not mine. <laughs> but even though she's dead, is her work dead? No, you can Google it, you will see. She has raised a whole order of other women with the same heart who are serving the same purpose, still ministering to people in need. They didn't build an apple. They did not build Microsoft. They didn't build the biggest oil company in the world, or a fintech. But they dared to love in the name of the Lord, and that was enough to become a global superstar for life. Why am I making this point? Because what we're talking about is everything and nothing is excluded. So in identifying the place of your calling, you must first understand that the Lord has equipped and called you and empowered you for everything and anything that he has called. But you must be willing and obedient. So when you hear voices or you sense or you perceive, do you respond? Are you even seeking? How do you seek? Are you spending time to say, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing here? What am I supposed to do with this? And then don't come to me with, I don't know my purpose. Whatever you do every day that will bless another and they will raise their hands and praise the Lord is purpose for the day. Just do it in the name of the Lord and keep doing it every day and moving. If it needs scale up, 
and there's another point. The Lord will take you there when you get there. That's why the Bible says, do not despise the days of humble beginnings. So we're not talking about big things. Pastor Goodman, when you started your church, how many people were there on day one? Like 50, ain't it? But deal. I remember when we started our first, first fountain service. In fact, it started as a prayer fellowship in somebody's house in Surulere. And then there was this hall in uh, Ilupeju where they will have done party the day before. We have to come and clean and make sure that everything is taken out of there for us to gather the next morning. But ultimately, answering the call for a professional man, for him, for the like of my pastor, became an influential platform that is transforming lives and causing others to multiply in their ability to impact lives. It's not about you. It's just about you responding to God earnestly. It's about you being disciplined and diligent in answering the call and doing what you do with a sense of responsibility and focus. One of the things I've learned in my life is if I sense that God wants me to do something, I just start. It doesn't matter how small. I just, I'm ready. I'm a one-man team. I can start by myself. Because I have come to learn that if it's God, others will appear. No, he will. He's a multiplying God. Read your Bible. It's all about multiplication. There's no vision that is of an individual one person, you by yourself alone, if it's you forever, something is wrong. That's just the truth. Because God has arrowheads. Arrowhead. Go and start elevation. But even arrowhead had arrowhead assistant. Who? His wife. So even with that, God did not allow him to stand alone. Arrowhead produced arrowhead. So now you have a London arrowhead. As we were chatting before coming out, Manchester is already starting. Somewhere else or somewhere else or somewhere else. Multiplication. Can you trust God? Because ultimately, in finding your voice, in stepping out and responding to the seed of God in you. If you're not thinking about you, you're not going to think whether it's small or big. You're just going to think about doing what the Lord has called you to. Because you're driven by the desire to please God, not the desire to be great. If you walk to please God, you will be great. Because the greatness does not come from anybody. It comes from God. But it is defined by him based on the season and the time. Let me just take a few things. Proverbs 31.9. Open your mouth. Judge righteously. Defend the poor and the needy. God is saying, act. Speak up. Whatever that assignment is, tied to people or tied to other people's needs. You know, ultimately, every business is tied to the needs of men. Showed us two stories. The pediatrician, who does she serve? Uh, children, they're people, or they're not? Uh -huh. She serves people. Her testimony is about working with God, overcoming challenges, in staying in the place of God, even when she thought it's looking like a bad idea, failing so many times. But listening to God, because there were lessons to be learned in the, what men called failure in the short term. Tenacity, diligence, dedication. When she has cases that look tough, she has learned how not to give up. 
Why? Because she, she couldn't give up on those exams. Whatever she had to do over and over again, she became better at. All of it will apply to her service. Poor and needy. Fintech solution. Who benefits from it? People. The diasporans are able to reach their families in Africa so they can help solve problems that exist. Every assignment of God in your life ultimately is to make the world better, is to change the life of others. So what are you doing for God when you are walking in your calling, when you find your voice? You're raising and touching people that will end up with their hands lifted up to the heavens and say, thank you, Lord. The day somebody sends money through that platform to somebody who needs to pay a hospital bill to save their child, what will they do? Thank you, God. They will thank the person, but they will be thanking God. for me. When someone is hungry and starving or desperate and needs something, and somebody is able to use the platform to solve the problem, what did they do? They created a situation where the Lord is glorified. Ask yourself, where is my assignment? What am I doing with it? And whatever I am doing now, am I exactly where I need to be? Or, I was running a program yesterday, and I asked them a question at a point. What is the name of Abraham's father? Hmm? What did you? Terra. Okay. So are you a Terra or an Abraham? Eh? People are not sure. <laughs> I need you to understand why I'm asking the question. What did God call first? Good. You need to think. The call did not belong to Abraham. It belonged to Terra. How did Terah fall out of the plan? He got comfortable. He got to an interim bus stop and stayed too long and never moved. Are you at an interim location? Or are you moving along with God according to the plan? Are you being distracted by the comfort of where you are because obviously, there must be something Terra liked about the place where he got stuck. And once he got, because some of you have come here to the UK. It's nice. The road works, and eh? somebody built it. There's electricity all the time, and eh? some people made sure that it is. There's this, there's that. Okay, it's all right. We have problems in Nigeria and any other country that you come from. But that's not your problem. Do you know what your problem is? Where has the Lord called you to? Because a lot of people are jackpying or moving without understanding that it is not about where you are. It is about where God has assigned you to. People have come here with regrets. True or false? Ah. Because it doesn't matter if there is gold on the street of London. Everybody will not prosper from it. No. Only those that God has called to prosper in that land. Because when the opportunities are open to them, he will enable them. But working according to his plan and his purpose. And then they would be a blessing for the things of God. Because they are working the purpose of God. Don't sit easy like terror. If indeed you are an Abraham that is moving to somewhere. And your move might not be about location. Are you a terror in a company or in an industry? Whereas you're supposed to be moving like Abraham to a place that maybe the Lord has shown you or you're waiting to be shown. But is your heart open to him? Because the place of your greatness, the place of your greatest impacts, the gr place of your greatest influence for God is only in the place he has assigned you to. 
And sometimes those places are not the most convenient. They're not problem free. They're not trouble free. They're not places that will not challenge you. So sometimes what you call your troubles are actually your sandpapers. You know what sandpaper does? It smoothens, it makes wood finer. It makes iron finer. But without the sandpaper, the iron cannot or the wood cannot be fine. When our doctor was failing and failing certain exams, the Lord was teaching her lessons and preparing her, making her better than the one that passed it the first time. You know why? If you read something once and you read it twice and you read it three times and four times, what do you think will happen? There's some things you would have missed the first time or the second time or the third time that you will know, which will make you better in some details, apart from the tenacity and the diligence that you learn in learning to wait for God. Ecclesiastes 3.7, a time to fear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. There are seasons of preparation, but there are seasons of action. Are some of you sitting too long? You know, some like to hide in school. Oh, I'm taking another degree. What? You're afraid of the real world? <laughs> you know, I'm interested in this industry, ah, but I'm too afraid. I'm not sure. What is the worst thing that can happen to you? That you are standing at the edge of the cliff and you do what? Jump. If you jump, what's the worst thing that will happen? You break a leg. Eh, they'll fix it. <laughs> but if you are afraid to, imagine how many other people are. But if you jump, even though you break a leg, you would have discovered what most are not able to. To be a vessel of influence and impact and scale for God, you have to have the heart of conviction and courage to move despite your fears. To move even when everything is not perfect yet. Why? Because it teaches you how to trust God. Having done your due diligence, because I'm not encouraging mediocrity, you will do your work but you will never have perfect work done for what you need. But you must have the heart and the courage to move with God, despite what you see or what you do not see. There's a purpose for your voice, the place of your calling, for your assignment. Some of you, even where you work, nobody has ever heard you speak against anything. There was a young man in my session yesterday who said, you know, he works in that company and he was the only black. And what did he do? That he facilitated another person being able to get him. But that that person is in HR, is in, is in a position to influence a change of policy that will make it easier for other immigrant people to get him. And she says, ah, they're going to think I'm a troublemaker. And therefore, She's not spoken up till now. Yeah, that's my young friend who shared that story yesterday. And I said to him, that's why you must also know who has God called you to call. Because <laughs> you wasted the resources and the investment of an opportunity in someone that was going to lock the door and not cause multiplication of others. Are you outside of the will of God or holding your voice because of selfishness? Because you are self-protecting. Ah, I don't want any. You can't change the world without disrupting things. And disruption requires courage. Sometimes you're going to have to understand Jesus didn't go into everywhere that he went to preach, only to comply with what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing. Did he? No. He taught them things in the ways they hadn't had it before. 
He challenged status quo. So if you want to be an influencer and a change maker, you're going to have to have the courage to challenge status quo. But you see, if you're truly a child of God following God, you will have wisdom with it. You will have wisdom and you will walk by the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? Because for every move, you will pray. And even as you pray, you will hear the voice of God telling you whether to turn to the left or turn to the right, that you may walk in it. And you will make some moves that will cause change. That's how legacy is built. Oh, Martin Luther King. Did Martin Luther King become Martin Luther King by sitting down? How many people do not know that he's a priest? But he saw wickedness and decided that it was not enough for him to be honored and for him to be taken care of. That at, risk, at the risk of his life, it was worth speaking up in other to make the world a better place for others. Black Americans are still struggling, but imagine what it was without the voices like Martin Luther King. Without people who knew in their heart that they were born to speak the truth at the risk of their life. Esther showed us that as well. I mean, the easiest thing you can be is be a queen. Just look beautiful and eat and drink and... But what use is a queen in the palace of a king whose entire race is wiped out and she stands alone? The day if she had allowed that to happen, she herself became vulnerable. Because no support system. Nobody praying along with her. Nobody, no Uncle Madekaya to go and seek for counsel. And the purpose for which the Lord permitted and allowed Vesta to make mistake. So that Esther could come in. See, God is a strategist. You want God to rule in the affairs of your life? Are you walking according to his plan? How are you useful to God? No, no, no. Tell me. What is his strategic interest in your life? Because have you responded to his calling to make it impossible for God not to get involved in your life? Me, part of the kind of wicked prayer I pray after I've looked for trouble and I'm in trouble, I go and tell God, you know that I'm here because of you. I did this in your name. I did this fighting for the righteousness of your word. Sort it out. The Bible says, challenge me concerning my word. You will not be afraid to go to God when you know you're walking according to even when there's fire on the mountain. Because the fire is not the problem. Are you on the same side as the God that rules in the fire? The three Hebrew children didn't think about being burnt in the, in the fiery furnace. They thought about not betraying God. And because God knew they were ready to die. And they said it. Can our God deliver us? Yes, but even if he does not. Daniel had a choice. He was enjoying the profits of the office of working under the king. All he had to do was comply with the law. What are you complying with that is taking your voice? What are you running away from that is your righteous assignment, which is your actual route to greatness? And as I said earlier, it's not about the big things or the small things. It's about the God thing that is assigned to you. Whatever it is, it might just be in your local, what do you guys call it, your council, your neighborhood. What is that thing that annoys you every time you see it? There's anger in you because something is not right and nobody has spoken up. And you join them to just say, mm. remember the good Samaritan? How many people passed? including priests and all. At the end of the day, one man who recognized that there's no way he could walk past a man who was about to die and injured, acted on it, and we're reading his story in the Bible for generations. 
Where is your voice? What is your assignment? What have you been called to? What have you laid aside? What is it that you know in your heart you owe God to do? Where are you creating the hole in the picture? Because if you don't, there are people attached to your side who cannot walk into their purpose without you acting in yours. We're not meant to walk the face of the earth like we never came. No. And it wouldn't all be at the same scale. It would all be different. But you know what? God has the space and the capacity for every one of us to shine. Remember? Is he Isaiah 60? What? Rise, arise. No, he doesn't say and. You see, there's a reason why there's no and there. Because the and makes you two different things. What God is saying is, as soon as you arise, the shining follows you automatically. And how do you arise? You arise in response to the call of God on your life. You arise to do that which the Lord has called you. And God is saying, even if you cannot see the sunshine yet, the moment you rose up to answer the call, there's a shining that has followed you. Sometimes it takes time for you to see it because God can have a delay mechanism that is deliberate to protect you. There's a scenario I saw on Instagram. There was a young man bouncing out of the house, wanting to step out. Jesus was standing here, and the devil was here with a big stick, waiting for that boy to come out so he could whack him down. I don't know if anybody saw it. And Jesus said, just said to the guy, wait. And the guy kept saying, time. Like, I want to pass now. Jesus said, mm. The devil was still waiting there, waiting to knock him down. Jesus said, wait, wait. That was, whoa, whoa, whoa. As some of us are, whoa. Jesus said, sit. The boy sat, waited. After a while, the devil got frustrated and walked away. Then Jesus crossed to clear the way and told the guy, oh yeah, now, pass. Sometimes, even though you've reasoned, there's a delay timing. Why? Because there are things the Lord is sorting out for you. But don't forget that God deals with the heart. He doesn't deal with everything else. The, day, the moment you arose, you have pleased God. It's why when you read the book of Hebrews, and it talks about the fathers of faith, he said for some of them, they believed they never received, but yet it was accounted for them as what? You rise, you speak up, act up, move in line with what the Lord has called you to. And let's see if God who has called you is unable to perfect that which he has called you to. Well, it's not me that put the timer, but your time is finished. Thank you very much. Wow, wow, wow. Please, we can't stop clapping till she's off the stage. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. I, I was even caught off guard when she ended because I was still like, she's still going on. She's still going on. How many people were taking notes? Okay, so we're going to compare notes. So, so let's know who is who in this place. <laughs> um, I mean, there were massive things for me um, from what she said, but I think there were... You know, like I said before, you know, she got on stage. Every time I hear her speak, it's a new experience for me. So today she had questions for me, right, which I was taking there. One thing I have here is, can you trust God? Very simple, but just got me thinking. Did anybody catch that? Okay. Um, another thing I have here is, you have a portion in God's agenda. Are you walking in it? Did anyone hear that? Okay. Are you guys just saying that? <laughs> um, and this part just seemed like she said it in passing, but it just spoke to me. She said, for every move, you will pray. 
for every move in your life, you, so it's, it's not like it's an option, right? For everything you're going to do, you will pray. Did anybody catch that? I was the only one that caught that one, you guys. <laughs> but thank you so much, Ma. That was amazing. God bless you. Thank you. A round of applause for her. Okay, uh, I'm, black. I'm back with my Slido. I, I think I really like it today. Um, so we're doing another Slido quick survey. We just want to know where everyone is coming from. We know the event is in London, but people are coming from all over, you know, all of England. Some people even came from, you know, other places. We also have people online who are joining from different countries. So, as usual, please scan the barcode or take the link down. And just type in real quick, where are you coming from if you're in the room? Where are you joining from if you're online? And we're just going to project that real quick. So please type away where you're coming from. I'm coming from 30 minutes away, so I can't even, there's no point in me participating. Um, but I know people have really journeyed here, so let's see where people are joining us from. London, Enfield, Canning Town, Derby, oh wow, Birmingham, Kent, okay, Reading, Tottenham. Oh wow. My folks online, are we participating? Because I know this isn't from anyone online, or not a lot of people. Grace End. Okay, Glasgow. See, I told you, people came from, from far and wide. Glasgow. Shout out to you if you came from Glasgow. Uh, USA, okay. Where, uh, uh, my people. <laughs> where else, where else? Uh, sorry, I can't really see. Edinburgh, I can see Edinburgh as well. Woolwich. Essex, Slough, wow, a round of applause. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you. God bless you. Um, so if you don't know, the Find Your Voice event is organized by the Elevation Church. If you don't know now, you know. We're excited to have you here. Thank you for honoring our invites and for showing up. We're going to watch a quick video now about the Elevation Church so you know who we are, you know where to find us, and you know where to join us every week. God bless you. This is the Elevation Church, where your journey to greatness begins. Founded on October 10th, 2010, by our visionary global lead pastors, Godman and Bola Akilabi, our church has been a beacon of hope and empowerment for countless individuals around the world. The Elevation Church isn't just a place of worship. It's a vibrant community dedicated to providing practical tools grounded in biblical teachings to help people attain and serve with their God-given potential in every aspect of their lives. We believe greatness is service and here you will find more than just sermons. You will discover a family that nurtures growth, promotes service and fosters an environment where everyone can thrive. Our gatherings are characterized by heartwarming experiences filled with love, laughter, cherished memories and the comforting embrace of God's presence. Today, the Elevation Church's reach extends far beyond our origins in Nigeria, with expressions sprouting across Europe, North America and other multiracial cities globally. Our mission to make greatness common remains unwavering. The Elevation Church has become an agent of change, positively impacting lives and leaving a trail of love and transformation wherever it goes. We achieve this not only through our churches, but also through our social enterprise arm, the Pistis Empowerment Foundation, which is a charitable social enterprise established to be a model provider of empowerment opportunities for the economically challenged, but also through partnerships with other Christian missions. These collaborations focus on job creation, health and education interventions and various social impact projects. Here in the United Kingdom, we have two expressions in London and Manchester, and we are building missional communities in other locations. Our London church is an oasis of community, love, friendship, and growth. As a UK registered charity, we are passionate about making an impact for Christ, not only in the lives of our members, but also in the communities that we call home. So if you're seeking a home and family that will inspire you to uncover your inherent greatness, we invite you to join us at the Elevation Church. Together, let's illuminate the world with the extraordinary light that lies within each and every one of us. 
The Elevation Church beacons all who seek purpose, community, and the welcoming embrace of God's love and presence. Join us at our London Expression. Our promise to you is that you will experience love and family. You will also be empowered for greatness in life to serve God and humanity with passion. Join us and together, let's make greatness common. All right, I think you can do that just a little bit better. Just put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so the Elevation Church um, has put this together by the grace of God. Um, like you've seen in the video, um, one assignment that God has given us is to make greatness common. And that we do everywhere that we go, all right? And of course, um, we, we invite you to go on with us on this journey. Um, we're, we're here for good by God's grace, right? We're here um, to make impact in innumerable ways, you know, to an immeasurable number of people, okay? Um, and we want to invite you to be a part of that journey. So right now, um, we're two locations in the UK and of course, um, a number in the works as well. We're starting what we call missional communities, all right? Um, and if, so once, because you register after the, I mean, for this event, um, you'll be hearing a bit more from us, you know, once we're done today. So thank you very much for being a part of this. Can I ask you one more time to put your hands together for the Elevation Church? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so as we go along, um, including those who are online, whether you're in the room, um, we're going to go ahead and take another session of music ministration, and it's really, really going to be impactful. So just let me just introduce to you um, a little bit about the person um, who is going to be ministering to us and who God is going to use to bless us next, all right? Um, he is a music producer, a singer, songwriter, um, and a multi-instrumentalist who is a symbol of hope and excellence in the 21st century. Um, 21st, 21st century. Uh, as a multifaceted artist, he first displayed his God-given talent and passion for music at the tender age of seven in his home church. Um, since then, he's become known as one of the UK's most sought-after musicians after releasing a vast and diverse musical collections um, and several successful albums. Um, most recently, um, a catchy, musical, musically diverse uh, EP in the first quarter of 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, can you welcome with me today um, Called Out Music, um, as God uses him to be a blessing to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, family, can I get an amen? Amen, amen. amen. Um, I just want to say a big thank you uh, for having me here. Thank you to Pastor Godman. I'm so grateful. Um, I just wanted to share quickly, a lot of people ask me, um, why did you use called out music? Like, if there's one question, if I had, just give me one pound, just one pound, for every time I had that question. Me, I'll just be traveling, I'll be an influencer, I'll be going from place to place, just, you know, loving Jesus. But why called out music? Why? And when I was 20 years old, um, the Lord said to me, you are a chosen generation, royal priest of the holy nation. It goes on to say, called out from darkness into the light. Now, I believe that every one of us, no matter where you come from, no matter what your past has been, God has a wonderful plan for your life. And he has selected you specifically for a divine task. So you are called out. So can you turn to the person next to you and say, I am called out? Come on, turn to someone else. Say like you believe it. Say, I am called out. <laughs> so before we go into a time of worship, I just want to read quickly from Psalms 103. I'm just in the mood of gratitude this, this afternoon. And um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and just read it. It says, praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. And then it says again, praise the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits? He forgives all your sins. Some say all. <laughs> Even the ones that you're going to do in the future. It's okay. He's forgiven you. He heals all your diseases. Say all. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. He satisfies your desires with good things so your youth is renewed like the eagle's. Verse 9 says, he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He doesn't treat us like, us like our sins deserve. Verse 11, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. 
So family, can I, before we even start worshiping, can you take a moment, whether it's to yourself, as you're sat where you are, and say, Lord, thank you. Come on, just make that your prayer of thanksgiving. Say, Lord, I thank you for loving me, for keeping me, for protecting me, for guiding me. I thank you. Come on, family, open up your mouth and say, Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, we are grateful. And I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Yes, I will sing. Yes, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth. It's with my mouth. Will I make known your faithfulness? Your faith. Your faithfulness. With my mouth. It's with my mouth. Will I make known? Will I make known? Oh. It's your faithfulness through all generations. Yes, I will sing. Because I love you, Lord. For your mercy. She never fails me all my days, all my days, Lord. From the moment that I wake up, from the moment that I wake, till I lay my head, till I lay. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of the good air. Come on, let's testify in this room this morning. Because all my life we say, it's all my life. Every moment of the day, all my life, it's all my life. You have been so. With every breath, with every breath that I am able. Oh, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I love your voice. I love your voice. Yes, you have led me, Lord. Yes, you have led me through the fire. In darkest nights, yes, you are close. Come on, make it personal. I've known you as a father. I've known you as... Oh, I've known you as a friend, known you as, oh, 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 and I have lived in the goodness, oh, it's all my life, it's all my life. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me, oh, it's all my life, so, so good. With every breath, with every breath that I, oh, I will sing, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Because your goodness is running after, is running after me. Oh, your goodness, your good, it's running after with my life laid down, with my life laid down, I surrender now. Your goodness is running, your goodness is running after. Yes, your goodness, your goodness, Lord, your goodness is running after. Yeah. Yes, your goodness is running after, is running after. With my life laid down, with my life laid down, I surrender now. 
your goodness, Lord. It's your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, it's all my life you have been faithful. With every breath that I am in, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, open up your mouth and say, I will sing. Sing of the goodness of God. Morning by morning, I will sing, I will sing. You sing of your goodness forevermore. It's so worth. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in this house forever and I will continue to sing of his wonderful love. Oh, yeah. and oh Lord my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all thy works thy hands have made oh I see the stars yes I see the stars I hear the Roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, the universe. Come on, lift up your hands, lift up your voices. Then sings my soul, and then sings my soul, oh, my Savior God. How great, how great thou art How great thou art How great thou art, O oh Lord Is how great thou art I then sings my soul My Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Yeah. So when Christ shall come with shouts of adoration. And take me home, and take me home. Oh, what joy, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow, then I shall bow, and then I shall bow. With shout of acclamation, with shout of acclamation. And and then proclaim, oh my God, it's my God, how great. Oh, then sings my soul, and then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, O oh Lord, is how great. And then sings my, it's my Savior God to thee.
How great thou art, how great thou art. It's how great thou art, how great, how great, oh, how great thou art. Thanks, thanks. So we give you thanks for all. We are so blessed. Yes, we are so. Our souls. Yeah, we give you with a grateful heart. We say thanks, thanks, Lord. Yes, thanks, oh, thanks. Father, we give for everything you've done for all. All you have done. We are so blessed. Yes, we are. Souls have found. So, Lord, we give you thanks. One more time. We're singing thanks, thanks, Lord. Yes, Can you say thank you, Lord? We are so blessed. Our souls have found rest. We give you thanks. Oh, what a God we serve. What a great, great God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Yes, Lord, you keep our lives in motion. We give you thanks. You provide our every need, Father. We give you thanks. You wake us up every morning, Father. We give you thanks. For being in control of our lives, Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, we bless you. And so, Father, with a grateful heart, we, your children, come to say thank you. Sometimes words fail us, but in this moment, all we have to say is thank you. Thank you for being our provider, for being our protector. Thank you for the wonderful plans that you have for us. May our hearts never grow tired of gratitude, Father. May our lips never get tired of saying thank you, Lord. And please accept our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on with a grateful heart. You may have your seats. God bless you. So I was... um. So we can take the reverb up for a bit now. <laughs> I was um, wondering what to do um, this afternoon. So I've just been in a moment where I'm just so grateful for the love of God. How many of you like are? Oh. Sometimes I wake up sometimes and I still can't understand it. I'm like, wow, this, this love is so powerful. So there's a hymn that I want to share if I'm permitted to. I don't actually know all the words, but I just felt it so strongly to share it with you. Is that okay, family? Is that all right? If you know it, um, why don't you sing along with me? Says the great physician, now is he the sympathizing Jesus? He speaks the trooping hearts to cheer. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Sweetest note in seraph song. The sweetest name on mortal tongue, the sweetest carol ever sung, 
Jesus, blessed Jesus. It's your many sins are all forgiven. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Go on your way in peace to heaven and wear a crown with Jesus. It's the sweetest note in seraph song, the sweetest name on mortal tongue. The sweetest cap roll ever sung. Oh, Jesus, blessed Jesus. It's the sweetest note in seraph song. Sweetest name on mortal tongue. The sweetest cap roll ever sung. Jesus, blessed Jesus. So I was wondering, I said, no other name sweeter than the name of Jesus. And I often find that as human beings, before someone says, I love you, sometimes it requires an action. So it requires you to do something that's almost considered worthy of the love, right? I don't know how many of us have been in the love. He's been in love in the room. Some people are quiet. Some people say, God, when? It's all right. It's all right. Don't worry. But sometimes, because I recently, I don't know if anyone's seen it, I recently got engaged. Can we just like, your, your loud is not loud enough. Don't worry. It's a, ah, it is well with my soul. Amen. So I'm really just understanding what unconditional love looks like, right? It's like, Omo, this thing is no a joke. Some of you have been married for more than 10 years. Ah, I salute. But then I started to think about the fact that Jesus loved me and chose to love me even before I was a thought in my parents' womb. And that started to change everything for me. So when I say sweetest carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus, I'm saying it from a place of understanding that I am eternally loved by an eternal God. Amen? So I don't know about you. Can you turn to the person next to you and say, you are eternally loved by an eternal God? Come on, turn to someone else who's smiling and say, you are eternally loved <laughs> by an eternal God. <laughs> so far, I'm going to teach you a quick song. And it's very simple. I know we've been singing a lot this afternoon. It says, how high, how wide, how deep is your love? One more time. It says, how, how wide, how wide. It's how deep, it's how deep is your love. And this song comes from, you know, the the book of Ephesians where our brother Paul wrote to the church and says, I pray you get the grace to understand just how high, how wide, how deep the love of God is. And the first time I read it, I was like, Omo, I need grace to understand this love. So I can't even understand it fully. But all I can do is embrace this love. Someone say embrace it. Because when you embrace the love of God, you embrace your true identity. So I'm going to sing the words of this song over you. And when we get to the chorus, can we just come in with how high, how wide. It's okay, you can touch the person next to you. How wide and how deep the love of God is. All right, family? All right. So it goes, it says, God of everything, you reached out to me. Made a home in my heart I just can't explain I just stand in awe Of your wonderful love Cause even on my worst days It stays the same I just can't understand Help me say how high It's how How wide how deep is how deep is your love is how high how high how touch your neighbor say how wide how deep is how deep is your love verse 2 says it's a love that knows no end i'm wrapped up in the arms 
of my father. Oh, yes, I am. I'll never lose my position. Yes, I will always be your child. And that's all that matters. Oh, because oh. even on my worst days, it stays the same. I just can't understand. Help me say how high is how how I say how, oh, how deep, how deep is your love, is your love. One more time, how high is how, how I, oh, how deep is your love. So we say, yes, Jesus loves me, oh, yes. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus. The Bible tells me. Come on, sing one more time. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Because the Bible tells me so and how high yeah how high how deep is your love how high how high how high oh it's how oh how deep is how deep is your love say is your come on family you've been amazing thank you so much for having me god bless you I'm the CEO and founder of Alpha Chains Limited and Alpha Childcare Limited. We're a childcare setting in the UK and um, we have 14 branches. I was born in the UK um, and went back to Nigeria and I came back to the UK at the age of 16. Um, started off as a cleaner um, in an insurance company and obviously I guess due to my character um, and opportunities came up within the insurance company and um, I then was promoted to become a filing clerk and like they say, the rest is history. From working in the insurance industry for 12 years, I was made redundant when I got married and um, then started the business, um, which has now led on to 14 branches in the UK. Um, I started off with a breakfast and after school club in a school with no experience whatsoever. Um, at the time, um, working with children, I, I didn't have mine at the time. I got my neighbor to come with me and for us to go and do this thing that I've been asked to do. It was only afterwards I sort of like retrained um, and got myself into it properly. Uh, um, what I found most challenging in managing um, the business is um, pe managing people. Um, because everyone comes in with their own character, their own flaws, and you come in with yours, you have a certain way of how you want things done. And I guess that's the, the start of the leadership in me and um, building what it is to be a leader. Like any other leader, um, I didn't have so much confidence at all in myself um, when I first started. Um, I was 30 when I started my first business and um, a new mom as well, a wife. Um, I didn't have what it takes to, I assumed I didn't have what it takes to be a leader. Obviously, I've never read a leadership book in my life at the time um, because that's not the word. And at the time, it felt like, it felt so like Asians ago now. The internet wasn't a big thing at the time as well. So it wasn't like where you had lots of information at your fingertips like we do at the moment. Um, so you had to literally get a book and read a book. Um, I didn't understand what mentorship was. I didn't understand what coaching was at the time. So I had to learn to do things by myself. Um, so you tried it. If it didn't work, you try again. Um, you feel like giving up and, and so on. And I guess persistent. I've always had this word persistent and determination that I never would give up on anything I start. Um, and I guess that kept me going. And 
Um, I am a vulnerable leader and I think that helped me as well with my team um, at the beginning anyway because I was so open, I was like a proper open book, you could read me um, and I, I'm smiling because I remember the early stages um, when if I have to tell anyone off I cry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a vulnerable leader. I was very open, um, very transparent with my team, and that I had without even knowing what a leader should be, which I know now. Those are the qualities of what it is to be a good leader, um, or some of the qualities of what it is to be a good leader. Um, I thought it was a bad thing um, until, can you imagine, after COVID? That's crazy, right? Um, but yeah, so those are the things that's really helped me. Um, after COVID, um, I had a terrible fall, which I would say gave me the voice um, because I knew if I died, um, what would have become of me or the things I've built. And I think that was the wake up call I needed um, to help me to be better and really to speak out and find my voice even more because I feel even having all of those branches, I never felt like I'd arrived and I never felt like I knew very much. Um, I never felt like I was good enough. So all of those things. And even then I had mentors and I have coaches, I have women I look up to. And I think as well, when you face challenges in your life, you always think that the worst has happened and how would you recover from that? Um, the one thing I know about myself, however, is the fact that I love risk taking. Um, I never take no for an answer. I never see failure as failure. I feel a see failure is always like, okay, a way of doing things differently. And I guess that's really what's helped me and kept me going, even when things are really rough and really challenging. Right, do you want to put your hands together one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, so what we've done, right, with these videos is just to make sure that there is a lot of encouragement, right, in the room, right? So we're saying um, someone found their voice um, and there is opportunity, there are many opportunities for us to find our voices as well. Um, and of course, we're also saying, right, uh, many of us have found our voices. We're doing great and tremendous things. I'm sure if we were to take a poll across the room, we'll find people who are excelling in their careers, people who are excelling in business, people who are excelling in family life and doing all kinds of things, you know. Um, again, the idea is that there is always room for more, right? There is always something to aspire to, right? Now, I mean, I had the privilege of listening to, of watching the entire video of this, I mean, this, uh, the entire recording, right? And I remember at the beginning, what she actually did say was that um, when, she, when she was, so she was born in the UK, taken back to Nigeria to go to school, and she came back to the UK at age 16, right? And that was almost like a, she was banished back to the UK um, because she said at the time, she, her parents sort of just felt like she was an embarrassment to them, that she had failed all exams possible, any kind of exam that she had done, right? And so wherever you are in your journey, there is always a next step, right? Um, there is always room for cost correction. Uh, and of course, what I'd also like to say is, um, I think at least two, if not three, um, of, our, of our people, people who have shared their stories with us via video are in the room, all right? So if you see them in the course of the event, you know, um, can you just, just wave, wave, wave? I see, I see, I see Dr. Abolo and over there, all right? Um, so, so if you find them after the event, you can take a picture with them, you can, you can get ask for an autograph, they're not gonna charge for it, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so um, what we're going to do next now is we're going to listen to another session of, of um, being blessed, all right? Um, and of course, we have in the room this afternoon our global lead pastor, the global lead pastor of the Elevation Church, right? So it's the one who's going to come up next and be a blessing unto us, right? Um, and of course, depending on how, on how engaged and engaging, all right, um, we are, um, we might just have that, that session, all right? There's a chance that we might have um, a question and answer session, an opportunity to interact with Pastor Godman and, and Mrs. Awoshika after that session. So we'll see how that goes, right? We'll give you instructions on how you can send in your questions before then, all right? Um, we will do that. So uh, without taking too much time anymore, um, we're going to just take Pastor Godman's introduction and then it will be on stage um, to be a blessing to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
a leader whose stance on greatness means service. Godman Akilabi is a leadership coach, author, mentor, and conference speaker who has served in ministry for over 25 years. He started as the founding pastor of Rema Campus Fellowship at the Federal University of Technology, Akure, Southwest Nigeria. Later, he served as an associate and then resident pastor of Daystar Christian Center. Currently, he serves as the global lead pastor of The Elevation Church and founder of a youth culture shaping movement called LifePoint, which is a renowned resting place for the weary and a signpost for the lost. The Elevation Church was birthed in 2010 with a God-given mandate to make greatness common. It currently has over 10 expressions, both locally and internationally, spread across Nigeria, London, Manchester in the UK, Toronto, Canada, and more to come in Europe, North America, and other countries where God is leading. In addition to his leadership responsibilities at the Elevation Church, Pastor Godman, or PG as he's family called, is involved in various other life and culture shaping initiatives. He leads the Better Half Media, a relationship ministry that produces diverse content, from books to talk shows, social media events and podcasts, with the purpose of promoting godly relationships and marriages worldwide. Pastor Godman is the visionary behind the Exponential Conference, where he passionately promotes unity across church denominations by aggregating competencies to share knowledge and experiences that empower the body of Christ and advance the kingdom of God. He is also the founder of Pistis Life and Leadership Institute, a human capital development organization for leaders, providing a distinct framework for facilitating learning in Africa and building a community of exceptional leaders equipped with the right values Values to transform societies and impact Africa positively. PG is the visionary behind Pistis Empowerment Foundation, a non-profit social enterprise established to be a model provider of empowerment opportunities for the economically challenged in targeted communities, creating wealth for them and supporting their overall well-being. Pastor Godman is happily married to Pastor Bolarinwa, the global co-lead pastor of The Elevation Church, and they are blessed with two beautiful daughters. Let us warmly receive the convener of Find Your Voice, Pastor Godman Akilabi. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Do you want me to, I mean, do you want to help me appreciate Mr. Oshika, one more time. You see, we are really blessed. All right. Thank you very much, Ma, for you know, your time with us today and being such a blessing and for taking our time to be here, despite the fact that I know that you, uh, you have a lot on your shoulders at this time. And this is uh, a time where we need to continually lift you and lift the entire Fountain of Life family in prayers, and we're doing that, and we believe that God will multiply strength to you in Jesus' name. One more time, can you help me appreciate her? All right, look at your neighbor for me and tell your neighbor it's time to find your voice. It's time to find your voice. Or say to somebody, I say, it's time to find your voice. Or say, your voice must become louder. Uh, say the world wants to hear your voice. voice. Praise God. Please, you may have your seat. Uh, thank you very much for Labi Noel and Called Out Music for being a part of Find Your Voice. For Labi has been with me almost everywhere I've gone on this trip in the UK, and I'm grateful for him and for the sacrifice that he puts into his home church, the Elevation Church. Uh, I pulled him into Accelerate Conference short notice in, in July, uh, end of June. I just called him and said, Fulabi, come to Nigeria, come, come for Accelerate Conference. I didn't even ask whether he had been booked or not. I just said, come. <laughs> and he said, he will come. I said, okay, I'm sending your ticket, just come, come, come to Nigeria. Let's, let's do Accelerate Conference together. Thank you, Fulabi, uh, for always being faithful to the, the vision of the Elevation Church. All right? Uh, I have a brief time to share with us, and the time is counting down. Yeah. Uh, you know, these days, whether it's a conference or a church, they've mastered a way 
of counting your time down very quickly. Uh, so I'm just going to try to go straight into what I have to talk about. But before I say that, I want you to know that your wildest dreams can come to pass if you choose to dream. Yeah, if you choose to dream. Why am I saying that? Is that on this trip to the UK, this find your, your, your voice, you know, tall, I've listened to all kinds of testimonies from people who have been connected to our ministry one way or the other, whether just online or have been to an expression of the Elevation Church. One way or all kinds of testimonies. Some of those testimonies I found weird. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the truth. Because, you know, some people think uh, the pastors know God so much, so God doesn't surprise them. <laughs> and I wanted to know that sometimes I'm as surprised as the person sharing the testimony. Because I wonder how some of these things really happen except for the God that is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving, and always there for us, and always lifting us up, and always jacking us up. So that's why I'm sure. Uh, you see, because everything we're doing around the world today was once a dream, but now a lot of them are becoming realities. Yeah. A lot of them are becoming realities because visions come to pass. The only thing that God demands of you and I is to just be able to dream. And I, I was with my big sis last August in Chicago at the Global Leadership Summit. When I felt, just sitting down at that summit, I felt God just spoke to my heart to help people find their voice. And that was where find your, find your voice came from. When I, uh, and I remember coming back from Chicago last August, and I, I called, first TJ called some, a, a few of my associates and said, look, uh, we're going to be doing all the things we used to do, but we're going to add this to it, maybe collapse some things into it, and it's just going to be about helping people find their voices around the world. So I know somebody here, you listen to uh, and watch some of those videos of people who seem to be finding their voices. But I wanted to know, uh, maybe early next year, maybe later this year, maybe sometimes next year, we're going to come back, it may be here, maybe somewhere else, or find your voice, and it may be your video that will be playing. <laughs> Somebody one day, right here in the UK, you're gonna, you know, we're gonna feature your video for how you found your voice politically. Uh, not so many political people are here. <laughs> yeah, but you know the truth is that wherever God has positioned you, just like you know, my sister said, uh, God wants you to find your voice. He wants you to find your voice. And this uh, season where God is taking us everywhere as immigrants, you know, when she was speaking, she mentioned Terah and Abraham. It just looks like the covenant that God has with us is not a static covenant, or it doesn't keep you in one place. God just wants to move you from place to place. So migration is not a new phenomenon. It's age long. It's been from the days of the Bible. So whether it's Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, none of them were in one place all their lives. I mean, the last one, Jacob, uh, was in Laban's house for like 20 years. Yeah. You know, he served seven, seven, and then added another six <laughs> for two wives, and then added another one. I mean, he was, he was, he, he was in, you know, in a different country. And at some point, after 20 years, he said, I'm going back home. And God said, it's time to go back. And when you, when you think about Joseph, the son of Jacob, it was the same thing. Joseph was in Egypt almost all his life. In fact, he died in Egypt. The only Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, somewhere there, maybe verse 9 or 10, he said, um, by faith, Joseph, when he was about to die, gave instruction about how they will handle his, his body, his bones, and all that. Yeah. But he lived most of his life right there in Egypt from his teenage years when he was carried away as a slave. So, you are not, this is not happening by chance. God has a plan for your life to send you here. And everybody online joining us from the US, from Europe, wherever you're joining from, God has a plan. And we have our own assignment cut out for us as a church, as the Elevation Church, and for me as a person. And that is to, to capacitate people that God is sending, especially younger people, that 
God is sending to find your voice. Someday, uh, just like you know, my good friend Jerry shared his own testimony, uh, how he found his voice in tech, Societel, UK, and all that. He got the award as the entrepreneur of the year for Cranfield School of Management last year. Yeah. Uh, and you know, when, when I think about that, I mean, <laughs> Jerry, I was playing golf with Jerry on Thursday somewhere in Kent and uh, was on Wednesday. And he said, Fiji, remember the first time I saw you? F first time I met you? He said, we just finished a conversation and you went to preach and you got on the stage and you crack a joke about me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just got on the stage that day and I was like, Oh, well, I just met a guy, you know, who grew up in England and was just spring, 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 trying to, I mean, just, you know, uh, 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 and everybody laughed. And I, I, I then told them about what he was doing. The only thing I didn't know was that he stayed for the next service. So he was right in the service. <laughs> so I told him on Wednesday, I said, when are you going to stop talking about this? Because you always remind me of how, <laughs> of how I make a joke out of our first talk. Praise God. Big question that I want to ask as I move ahead. And this uh, is because I want to speak to a meet. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to struggle with this a little bit. You're going to struggle with this a little bit. Especially as I try and attempt to bust this meat. And it comes to the question, and that's what I'm talking about. For you to find your voice you must answer this question periodically. Is your ladder too short? Is your ladder too short? This is busting the myth that says that there's a glass ceiling. And especially when you're an, an immigrant, you must make sure that you don't buy into the myth of a glass ceiling. It's a myth. It's not real as much. And you know, especially here in the UK, that it's a bit crowded, you know, and all that. Uh, it looks like they've just sealed up the top, and you know, how far you can go is determined by a few people. Nothing can be further, you know, uh, from the truth than that. Because God, the Bible says he rules over the nations of the earth. His jurisdiction does not have an end. You may have collected a visa to come here, or one kind of permit or the other. But he doesn't need permit. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And everything that is within it. Including thrones and dominions and authority. Tangible and intangible. Spirit and physical. Everything. So you just need to have it at the back of your mind. That <laughs> as a matter of fact. The glass ceiling is not real. I meet with dozens of people every year in counseling and in charts and all that who tell me, you know, uh, how they, they, they've grown in their career or in their business or maybe they relocate to a, a part of the world and it looks like everything around them just stalls and they're not able to find their voice. They're not, you know, no, you can't call their life. Their life doesn't have a great shake. Nothing is going on. Everything just looks like stagnating. Or it just looks like moving small, small. You know, when you are in what we call in Lagos, go slow. <laughs> yeah. And it's just no remarkable progress. No great shake. Everything just looks like, yeah. But one thing that is sure is the Bible says in Proverbs 4 and verse 18 that a part of the just it's like shining light. It shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. It then means that according to God's original intention, there's no glass ceiling for you. Your path is supposed to shine brighter and brighter. I mean, let me go a little further quickly to say one of the reasons why I believe with all my heart that there's, there's really not glass ceilings uh, are the making of the human mind. Is this. If you have read your Bible before very well, especially the book of Genesis, you will understand that Joseph was an immigrant in Egypt, undocumented, 
or documented commercially. He was not actually an undocumented immigrant. He was a commodity. Because in Genesis chapter 39 and verse 1, the Bible says Joseph was bought by Potiphar. If you put that scripture on the screen for me, I appreciate it. Uh, Genesis, yeah. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, did what? Can I hear from you very well? Can I hear you again? What can be worse than being a commodity? Not even regarded as an immigrant, whether documented or undocumented, but a commodity that was sold in the market. Joseph was not better than, you know, banana. Because they just bought him for money. That was it. Now, if, if truly there was something like a glass ceiling, how can a banana become prime minister? Yeah. How can a commodity rule the country? Ladies and gentlemen, there is grace in God that sharpens you up, capacitates you, lightens your path, enlightens your mind that you become sought after. That, you know, people are looking for you. You're not the one looking for them. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying today. And I pray that grace will come upon somebody here today. That's why I'm fully persuaded that someday, as you find your voice, event like this, your testimony will wow people. I said your testimony will wow people. In the name of Jesus. In fact, as things start to happen, please let us know. Because I, I, I plan to be doing, you know, some IG Live and, you know, YouTube events with people who are finding their voices. I'm waiting to interview you. <laughs> yeah, some people don't believe it. I said, I'm waiting to interview you. I'm waiting to interview you. In the name of Jesus. So it's important for us to understand that according to Proverbs 24 and verse number 10, is that if you fail in the day of adversity, said your strength is small. So, migrating, moving in, from season to seasons in life, some people moving from being single to being married, or, you know, or being a student into become, a, you know, a working class adult, uh, moving from living in Africa to living in the UK or from other parts of Europe into the UK or from UK to Canada, because some people are on a journey. Yeah. Still looking for how to live here to go somewhere else. <laughs> but I just told you that that's not bad in itself. Abraham did not stay in one place. <laughs> so just make sure that God is speaking to you. Yeah, just make sure that God is speaking to you because the health is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And don't be afraid to take bold steps. But just make sure that God is leading you. But you know as you move from place to place, you engage what we call transitions. And transitions are dangerous places to be because the devil loves transitions because of how he makes people vulnerable. Yeah. Because transitions come with uncertainties. And in the midst of uncertainties, the devil is looking for how to take advantage, an advantage of somebody. So we start to second guess ourselves and feel like the Jews, the leaders of the Jews that were sent into the promised land in Numbers you know, 11, 12, 13, uh, uh, where they, they got there and they, they, they told themselves were like grasshoppers in our sight. They described everything. Everything was working well. It looks like a developed country. Yeah, they had good agriculture, so the fruits were big. You know, GMO and all that. Yeah. <laughs> it was from those days. Because everything was giant. Everything was big. They had technology. And they, they freaked out because they didn't understand what was going on. And they just said, well, a grass was passing our sight. I was sharing in Manchester earlier today how in 2005 I visited the nation of Canada for the first time. That was like 18 years ago now. And I went downtown to run to my friend, took me at night. It was my wife and I. Yeah, I'd just been married maybe like two years. Or, or so then, yeah. Well, now 20th year, yeah, so two years. And we went, and then, you know, working, as we're walking, 
downtown Toronto, I just started hearing the voice. I see how big this place is. Everything is built up. Everything is massive. If you come here, they won't find you. <laughs> That's what I was telling myself. Nobody will even notice that you came. You know, just, just stay in Dario Lagos. <laughs> this place is not meant for people like you. I mean, I was on holiday. So it didn't even cross my mind. You know, like people go on holiday and I, mean, I just told myself, if you, if you miss here, you will miss for life. Because <laughs> this place has been set up, everything packaged, and, you know, it looks like there's no space. But I think in 2017, I was back in that same Toronto to preach at one of the biggest churches in the city. And as I landed at the airport and they picked me up in this nice Mercedes car, the Holy Spirit told me, flashback. Is it not the same you? <laughs> you said if you stay here, you will miss. Have you missed? Did you miss now? <laughs> Is it not the same you that they are inviting, you know? It took me to this big suite in the hotel. And I was like, so it's possible to grow in the seed that God has put in your heart, in the calling of God upon your life, in the voice that God has given you, that it becomes strong and a river berates to the point that people hear it in the different areas of your calling, whether it's in the social sector, or, or whether it's in, you know, it's in business, or not-for-profit, or, or, or in parenting, whatever opportunities that God has given you. That you can be so capacitated that your voice can be heard continually, and it can be a voice of transformation. Are you still here today? So, the truth, actually, is that there are no glass ceilings. We only have people with short ladders. Yeah, we only have people with short ladders. Put my, my first slide on. I want to show something. Yeah, you know, when you get to the end of a ladder, all right, it's just how high your hand can touch from that point. Except you get a higher ladder, however high your hand can touch, that's your glass ceiling. That's your glass ceiling. And at that point, you can think there's a glass ceiling. It's just imaginary. There's nothing like that. It's just that you may need to add some more steps to your ladder. Because the more you add to your ladder, if you won't stay with a short ladder, then the higher you go. If you want to find your voice, you must recognize the fact that Easy is not enough, and I'm going to explain. Yeah. If you want to go beyond the, 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 the glass ceiling, imaginary glass ceiling, you must understand that easy is not enough. It is easy to pick the low-hanging fruit, but don't stay there. What short ladders do to people is that it positions them only for low-hanging fruit. And they forget that there are bigger things that your voice can be louder. Just low-hanging fruits all over the place. I check the stats, the statistics. For instance, in the US, you have 17 million owner-operated businesses in America. In, 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 in the UK, you have 4.2 million owner-operated businesses. I mean owner-operated businesses without em employees. That's what I mean. Yeah. And see... If you operate a business like that, you have created your own glass ceiling. Yeah. Because you're like a chuck who is maybe into plumbing or something, and chuck as a truck. So chuck in the truck may be the name of the company. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And when chuck is not in the truck, there cannot be a company. <laughs> because the truck and the chuck, they're connected together. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That's what one-man business you know, does to people. So Chuck has to be in the truck, and the truck has to move before money can come to Chuck. Yeah. But what happens to Chuck having more than one truck and having many people that he can trust to drive the truck and go to people's homes and fix their plumbing problems? Then we move from one-man business or just a one-man show to run an organization. The moment you move into running an, an organization, you have already broken whatever glass ceiling that is at that level. 
I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. And it's the same equivalent when you think about your careers. You think about your careers. You can, you can come off the, 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 you know, the low-hanging fruit. There are too many low-hanging fruits in career. You have been there five years. The same qualification you came in with is what you still had, what you still have all right, right now. That ladder, the step has not increased. So you are the one that is the glass ceiling. You created it yourself. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because the more you, if you can add something else, another step to the ladder, you are definitely taking off the glass ceiling off you. So increase your ladder to reach the real fruits. Because the real fruits are higher. You know, it's like when you want to, you know, when I was growing up, you want to pluck the fruit from a tree. Is that how you use a stick? You throw stones. Yeah, if you don't grow up in Africa, you, you can't understand this. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. Because, <laughs> or you climb the tree. But you know that you cannot climb a coconut tree like that because of the height. And I also saw where they're harvesting uh, palm kernels and, you know, palm stuff. And there's a mechanized way to do it. But when I go to preach in places like Akwaibom State or somewhere in eastern Nigeria, which I visit regularly, I was still in Akwaibom State in July to preach or to present the paper at a conference, a leadership conference. And, you know, when the plane's about to land, you see all these plantations. And you ask yourself, if people have to climb the way they used to do it in, the, in those days, you know, to go up, how many can you harvest in a plantation of thousands of trees? But when big equipment come, they take you to the highest level in a few seconds. Am I saying the truth? Yes. Yeah. So it's like what happens when you add to your ladder? Ladies and gentlemen, the height of your ladder is not the highest height in existence. Yeah. People have all kinds of ladders that take them to all kinds of you know, new levels from time to time. And you are the ones that needs to. See, if you run a small business, for instance, what I'm saying is you can find your voice. All you need is to, uh, uh, is to stop thinking about the low-hanging fruit. Easy is not enough. So it's, it's a whole, whole lot of headache to be the one thinking of how to pay salaries. It's easier to think of how to receive it. So invariably, if you are not at certain leadership levels, you are still at the low-hanging fruit of thinking of when your account will receive money. But what about the people who sit to think about when the money will be paid? I mean, how the money will come. Some people, it's their headache to sit together because of the level that they're taking responsibility. You may not even be at that level on your career path right now, but can you start to envision that? Because that's what position your voice to be heard. Because when you start to think like that, the kind of conversation you will have in meetings will be different. You will not just be looking for how the organization will spend more. You will always be thinking of how more will come into the organization. So I also want to challenge you that it's time for you to think differently and re-envision your life, understanding that what has worked before may not work at this time. And it's time for you to unleash your superpower. It's time for you to understand that God has something bigger than what you have experienced in mind for you. You know, most people think that what brought them to where they are will take them to where they're going. And life is not like that. God wants you and I to, to rethink our lives from time to time, to think about, you know, what is it in me? Like Mr. Oshika was saying, what is it in me? What is that one thing in me? What's the magnet that I carry that can be capacitated, that can attract more to me? You know, what, what happens most of the time is that uh, people play to the gallery when it comes to what makes them think. What's the big deal about you? Some people second guess themselves and they think, oh, no, there's nothing, there's no big, uh, no, no, no big deal about me and there's a big deal about you. You just haven't discovered it. That's the truth. Or maybe you're, 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 you're not recognizing it. And you need to trust God to, to, you know, to give you the power of recognition. The power of recognition. 
That's what the Apostle Paul was writing about in Ephesians chapter 1 when you read from verse 16 down to 19. It said, uh, in Ephesians 1 and verse 16, he said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. What, what, what is that thing in me? Paul said, God, as we pray, and as we pray here again today also, and as you continue to pray, can continue to open your eyes of understanding and enlighten it that you may know what is the hope of his calling in your life. Can you say a better amen to that? Amen. Somebody here, I pray for you today, you will know the hope of his calling amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So add steps to your ladder. Add steps to your ladder. Add steps to your ladder. Somebody may ask me, how do I add steps to my ladder? One of the ways you can add steps to your ladder is to think about engaging new skill set, new tool sets, and new mindsets. Can I say that one more time? Yeah. New <laughs> skill set, new tool set, and new mindsets. Some of us are, too, they are, we are stuck with the same skill set, same two sets, and same mindset. So the ladder remains short, and your hand is not able to reach the things that God has proposed for you, and then you buy into the meat of a glass ceiling. Whilst God, what God wants is for you, you know, to, to add to the steps in your ladder, because the higher your ladder, the higher your hand can touch. And you know the sky is very wide. Yeah. And the higher you can go. I pray for somebody here today, my God will take you higher. Amen. Or say better, amen. amen. I say my God will take you higher. Amen. My God will open your eyes to new skill sets. Amen. New two sets. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember many years ago, I think this was maybe 2008 or so, I was visiting my older brother who lives in, in the Bay Area in, in California. And uh, as we were going on the road, uh, uh, his tire was going flat, and he just drove into a, a, a vulcanizing uh, store like that. Uh, funny enough, today, uh, he, has, he now has a chain of those, the franchise uh, for that vulcanizing store in, in the U.S., but that time, he was still in Haiti. So we drove in. This was 2008, and for me, coming from Lagos, you know, I always like to observe. So I was looking at how they're going to change the tire. Come on. They changed the tire in less than five minutes. So this was what happened. We got in there. You know, rather than the way we put, you know, the, uh, we put Jack. Because uh, <laughs> we're talking about two sets, ladies and gentlemen. They slip something under. The guy used his leg to slip something under and then from his hand, press something and the car was going up. And then he brought out something that looks like a gun. Pru, 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 pru. Removed it and the tire was out. That tire came out in less than two minutes. And then he threw the tire where I grew up, you know how they removed tire from the rim? <laughs> they put something inside it, pa, pa, pa. <laughs> Some of you have seen it before, all right? <laughs> to be able to remove the tire. The guy just threw the tire into something, and boom, the rim was removed. And then they brought another tire, boom. <laughs> and they, they, they inflated it and threw it back, and boom, 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 boom. <laughs> And he pressed something, and the car came down. You're ready to go. See, the two set that you have matter. That's what I'm saying. Your two set matter. Your skill set matter. You'll be playing to the gallery of a, of, of, uh, of a glass ceiling when you don't pay attention to these things. But you know the most dangerous of it is your mindset. You can put a new set, a new skill set, or a new tool set in the hand of somebody whose mind has not changed. It will make a difference. It, it will make no difference at all. No difference at all. So it's important that you and I pay attention to the skill set, the tool set, and the mindset. The Bible says you should not be conformed to this world. Romans 12 and verse 2. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. If you want to find your voice, you must commit 
to a renewed mind, consistent. I know you've heard this before, but I'm presenting it to you in a different light because of how it affects your life. You need to change your mind. You, know, you, you see, one of the things that, uh, uh, my time is up, so I, I need to wrap this up now. But one of the things that I discovered recently that really rocked my world was that the courage to change who I am is what my faith is meant for. The courage to be more like Jesus, the courage to align with the will of God for my life and to evolve. That's what my faith is. You know, some people here use their faith to get a job, and that's not bad. And you can use your faith to get a spouse. That's not bad. You can use your faith to get healing. That's not bad. But when you go to Hebrews 11, now wrap up on that. When you go to Hebrews 11 and you read, you know, I think from about verse 3 or 4, after the Bible talks about without faith, it's possible to please God and all that and all that, um, the next thing it was, he said, by faith, he started mentioning people, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So, the faith, the first mention of one era of faith was not what he received, but what he offered to God. Yeah. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. And there's a mindset difference between Cain and Abel. There's a huge mindset difference. Go and read it in Genesis. Huge mindset difference. Cain brought something, anyhow. Abel brought something that delighted the heart of God. And God said, I accepted his offering, and I rejected his offering, there was, you know, a complex, maybe not so complex equation between the two offerings. One was very pedestrian, lackluster, just drop something and go. The other one was intentional and all that. It's about way of life and mindset. And then you go to the next one. <laughs> the next verse was talking about Enoch. By faith, Enoch walked with God. Not by faith, Enoch bought a house in central London. No. By faith, Enoch walked with God. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. He, Enoch walked with God. And he walked with God so much, God took him away. And he says, by faith. My faith should be used to trust God to change my thinking and how I see myself completely. Yeah. It's not just about the material things that he can deliver. That is good. That is the kindergarten of faith work. Because you can, you can, you, you, you know, you can have a car and your mind is not renewed. And you are still living anyhow and you can destroy your marriage. Yeah. But your faith can put you on the path of straight and narrow. Like, you know, walking with God. So pleasing to God. And I can go on and on and on. You can read it on your own. The faith was about, it's always about what, how you align with the will of God for your life, find your voice, be constrained enough. The courage, like Joseph, to live in Potiphar's house as a commodity, but yet his mind is not commoditized. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, because Joseph, who I was reading, message translation recently, the Bible says, Joseph, Genesis 39, I think maybe verse 8 or something like that, if you can look for it for me, say was strikingly handsome. Strikingly handsome, and it's a slave. (laughs) It takes courage. Yeah, it takes courage. It takes courage to be handsome and well packaged as a commodity. To the point that Madame of the house will be suffering from infatuation (laughs) because of you. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. That's courage. And that's how we remove glass ceilings. Because it was that faith and that courage that Potiphar saw and said, you're going to be in charge of this house. And when he had his encounter with Pharaoh, by stroke of chance, it was the same thing. Pharaoh removed all the glass ceilings, said, there's no one like you in whom is the Spirit of God. 
upon whom we can commit this assignment. No glass ceiling in Egypt. Take over, 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 take over. Tap somebody for me and say, it's time for you to summon the courage to take over, to take charge. Lastly today, just in case there's someone here, whether here or here or there or online, who attempted, you know, for your voice to be heard and you suffered any kind of casualty. As I finish today, I need to help you to understand that there's no failure that is fatal. Yeah, there's no failure that is fatal. If you are willing to try again, God is always there to cheer you on. Someday I'll be able to tell this story a little better, but I'll give you a snippet and you can read the rest online. There's a man called John Stephen Aquari. This guy represented Tanzania. That's him. His story, the video is still on YouTube. You can go and watch it. I've showed it in our church many times. This guy represented Tanzania 1968 Olympics, Summer Olympics in Mexico City. I mean, it was a, it was a marathoner. The man is about maybe 87 or 88 right now. But you can imagine in 1968, young man, marathoner, and was representing his country, 5,000 miles away from Tanzania to Mexico. But while they were running through the hills and all that, the altitude, you know, he lost his balance and he fell. And he got injured. His shoulder was almost fractured. If you see him like that, you see bandage on his leg. Yeah. This guy, they bandaged him, they did everything, but he kept running. The guy, I forgot the name of the guy who won the gold medal that year. That guy finished the marathon that year, two hours, 20 minutes, and a few seconds. They had awarded gold, silver, and bronze. The stadium was emptying house. Just a handful of people, like 2,000 people were remaining in the stadium. At three hours, 25 minutes, and 52 seconds, or thereabout, John Stephen Aquari ran into the stadium. Look at the number of people remaining in the stadium. Ran into the stadium. They had concluded the event. But when they saw him running, everybody stood up and started clapping. So the cameramen that were packing up, just like they're going to pack up here very soon, <laughs> they quickly plugged their stuff back and ran after him and were following him. And people gave him a standing ovation. They caught up with him and they asked him, why didn't you stop running? You know that they would have concluded. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know they would have concluded. Everything would have finished. He said, they did not send me from Tanzania 5,000 miles away to just come and participate. They sent me to finish. And I will finish. Are you going to finish your race? Yeah. Are you going to allow your voice to be heard around the world? You are a global citizen. I don't care what passport you carry right now. You carry the passport of heaven. Yes. And the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And everything that dwells within it. And if you understand this and you are willing to live in the fullness of it, then the grace that we enjoy with God as the Elevation Church to make greatness common, that grace can find expression over your life. Because that's the grace that propels us and makes us know that our voice can be heard globally. So like Stephen, John Stephen Aquari, it's time for you to keep running. I, I don't care if you're hoeing right now, keep running. You're going to pay up, and you're going to move into abundance. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Whatever casualty you suffered, it won't stop you. Yeah. If you believe that, lift your two hands to Jesus and say, I receive courage, I receive courage. to find my voice, find my voice. This, season. this season. Say, I declare today, that nothing will stop me from finding my voice, fulfilling my purpose, and living for God. Say, I'm a global citizen. Say, I carry the hand of God upon my life. Say, when I show up, God shows up. So I'm not alone. Say it again. Say, I'm not alone. Say, there's no glass ceiling for me on my path. To fulfill my destiny. Say God is with me. Nothing will be against me. Say in this nation. My voice will be heard. Say globally. 
my voice will be heard. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shall they believe in? Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. If you are blessed today, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know, but I just feel like saying one or two prayers. Uh, maybe you may not be able to take a Q&A again. Whatever else we need to do, we'll do it uh, just before we go. But I don't want you to, uh, if you can, don't run off. Because I just don't know what God may want to do in your life. Uh, uh, maybe I'll call, uh, uh, this time I won't call her, Mr. Oshika, I'll call her Pastor Ebuku. <laughs> I'll call her up to also speak a blessing. Yeah, just, just to speak a blessing over you. You see, the Bible says, by the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. What we're talking about is a product of blessings. Blessings and blessings. You see, this is not a motivational conference. It's, it's the power of God that releases our voices. Yeah. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a teacher of God's word. Yeah. I mean, I've spoken in such a way to give you a broad understanding, but please don't make the mistake. Yeah, it's about the word, the word, the word. And where the word of the king is, there is power. So if there's anyone that influence on my voice who has stagnated one way or the other, or you suffered any kind of casualty, the God who's kept her this many years, who's kept me this many years, can open new doors for you. Amen. Can open new channels for you. Amen. If somebody has walked out of your life, it's so that God can walk in. <laughs> No one can cause your destiny to stagnate. Amen. Nobody is that powerful enough. So I don't, I, I, I don't care whether you suffer the separation or divorce. Your life has not ended. Yeah. Your voice will still be heard. You look at the woman in the Bible, Ruth. I mean, what can be worse than that? Elimelech died. Chilion and Malon, whatever their name, also died. Ruth all of a sudden became a widow. Yeah. <laughs> but yet... God turned everything around. And she found her voice migrating again to Bethlehem. She became the wife of the richest man. Not just that, but the influence that comes with it to transform lives. Glory to Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, just to back up something my brother said. You know, for those who know, I was on the board of First Bank for 10 years and four months. Yeah. I chaired it for ten, five years and four months as the first and only female today. But at the end of it, it was a battle. Uh, but it was a battle of righteousness. It's a most, you might not know the full story yet, but it's unfolding itself now. Now, it's easy if you do not know who you represent, to misconstrue your challenging moments and bow to the mammon because you will always have the option and then give up on God. I'm talking about the ladders. I'm talking about some of the things he's told you that you might be in some challenging moments now, but they're nothing. They're your sandpaper moments. They're your trials are your stepping stones. For God to do new things. Because also, God will not commit to people that he has not proven. So your tests are part of the plan. It's your persistence and your ability to trust God and continue to move with him that removes every ceiling. Because what is interesting is that coming out of that situation that supposedly would finish some other people, there were two critical global checks that happened on me after that. But by the time it was done, and my youngest son said something to me. He was 19. And he said, Mom, you know, I know you're angry and you're upset at this. Because I said to myself, I lived my life in a way that I never have to find myself in this kind of situation. He said, you know, the people who are doing this our process, think they know you, but when they're done, they will really know you. 
And when they really know you, it will work for you. He was so right. He was a child who spoke, but God speaking through a child. Because what came thereafter is multiple things on the global level. Multiple assignments, multiple boards at global level that transcended what seemed to be the trial. And now, I can sit from wherever I am and I'm watching the guys who thought they had a plot get buried in their own plots. So all I'm saying to you is, lift up your heart, lift up your eyes, and lift your hands to the Lord. And no matter what you see, I declare that you will never set the Lord aside. Yeah. That you will have the courage to bear the burden like Joseph did for a season. Because without the prison, there was no way for Joseph to get to the throne. But for a season, go and check, how many years was he in prison? It was about 10 years or so. Some people would have given up. Some will commit suicide. Some will. But he knew the God that called him. So I pray that the Lord will reveal himself to you. Amen. In a way that you will never walk away from him. Amen. That no matter what you see, you will not betray God. Amen. That no matter what you see, you will stay the cause. Amen. That no matter what you see, you will trust the Lord. Amen. That no matter what you see, you will stay with it. Amen. And you will stay with it in righteousness. Amen. And that the Lord will help you to find your voice and to find it globally. And to find your place and grant you the grace to occupy it in his name. Amen. As long as it is in his name, nothing can stop you. I promise you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much. Sir. Lift your two hands to Jesus today. Father, we thank you for a release of global grace for people in this place to find their voice, for everyone online, wherever there has been stagnation. I decree and declare right now that the hold of stagnation is broken. We stand against the spirit of confusion. We decree that the hold of confusion is broken over your heart. From this place, you will know the next thing to do. Amen. You will not be stranded. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Anyone who has been kept in holding pattern, it just looks like there's a lot of movement without even accomplishment. I declare right now, an end has come to that holding pattern. Amen. Every movement will move you towards divine accomplishment. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone who is just touching things and moving, touching things, no establishment. Because you are here today, I pray over your life according to the word of God. Say, so let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hand. So I pray the blessing of divine establishment upon the work of your hand. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord turn you to a brand. Amen. He told Abraham, he said, I will make your name great. Which means I will give you a brand that will be global. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I declare you a global brand. Amen. After the order of Abraham. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And I pray for you today that nothing will die in your hand any longer. Amen. Careers will not die in your hand. Businesses will not die in your hand. Relationships will not die in your hand. In the name of Jesus, whatever God has placed in your hand will prosper in your hand. My God will grant you clarity. In the name of Jesus, every limiting belief, limiting thought of glass ceilings are removed in the name of Jesus. My God orders your steps into the place of your flourishing. No more dryness. No more dry seasons. No more dry spells. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Anyone here who may be limited 
because of weakness of body, heal health. I pray for you that sickness will not stop you. Amen. No disease will stop you. Amen. So the healing power of God comes upon you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing limits your destiny any longer. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Lord, let the grace to make greatness come on. Come upon everyone at the influence of my voice. Thank you, Jesus. May your testimonies be loud. Amen. May your word hear your testimony. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody who is blessed today, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, uh, please, I, I want you to just uh, be quietly seated. We'll, we'll wrap up in a few minutes. Um, we we want you to be a part of just one or two more things that we're doing, and then we'll set you on your way. Yeah. All right. You want to put your hands together one more time for Jesus? If you have truly been blessed today, <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen, Praise God. All right. So two more things, and then we will be we will be on our way out. Right. Um, the first thing I'd like to do uh, before we go is, can I ask you one more time to just appreciate our global lead pastor, my pastor, my father in the Lord, just give him a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. All right. So um, I want to just give us um, now, so, so again, for those who are in the room, um, just so you know that um, um, we have one more. Um, session of music ministration that is going to happen um, for Labi Noel is in the room. It's going to be a blessing to us one more time, right? Uh, but at this point, what I want to do really um, is to give you an opportunity, right, to experience the privilege, you know, um, of being blessed by God. Uh, and one way that I want you to experience that privilege, you know, is by giving something to God, right? So at this point, um, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to lead us, you know, as we give. Um, and when I say give, right, so it's not just because... Um, um, the Elevation Church is, is in need. It's just an opportunity for you um, to be to tap into what God is doing through the Elevation Church to be a blessing to the kingdom of God, all right, and of course to receive um, the blessing of God as well, all right. So, so where you're sitting, um, there should be an envelope around you. Um, there are three ways through which we give at the Elevation Church. Um, if you want to give, by if, our preference is that you give electronically, all right. If you want to use your card to give, um, can I ask you to please scan the barcode that we have on the screen? Um, if you want to do a bank transfer, um, the bank details are on the screen. Same thing on the envelope that you have around you. And if you want to give cash, right, um, you can use the envelope to give, okay? We've put the envelopes there just in case you're unable to scan these or you can't see very clearly what's on the screen. Just use the envelopes, you know, um, if you're giving electronically and just leave the envelope after them, we'll pick them up. And of course, if you're giving cash, just put in, in the envelope, our ushers will come around to pick them up. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful unto you uh, because you're the giver of all good things. And we just appreciate the privilege that we have uh, to be able to give unto your kingdom, to honor your name, and also to be a part of what you're doing um, in, on, on half in this season. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that as we commit our offerings and seeds unto you, um, we receive the blessings of those who give unto you in the name of Jesus. We receive the grace not only to find our voices, uh, but also to go higher and higher and higher on the ladders of life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we know that many questions in our hearts in this season have been answered. We thank you because we know that multiple doors are being opened unto us. We thank you because we know that our lives are being transformed and we are becoming blessings unto other people in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we know that our love for you is increasing our knowledge of you is growing, and we're becoming more like you on a daily basis. Thank you, Father, because you've heard us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. All right, so our, our ushering team is just going to go around. They will go around, all right, to be able to take um, the offering for, especially from those who are giving, um, um, using the envelopes. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, next thing I want to do um, before I bring our next, our next minister on stage is I want to just welcome a very special set of people, whether you're in the room. And of course, those who are online, I hope that you're participating and giving as well. Um, there is no distance in the spirit. You know, everybody is welcome to participate. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So I also want to recognize everybody 
um, who is interacting with the Elevation Church, perhaps for the first time today. So it's your first time attending a fiscal event of the Elevation Church, right? I, I want to say a very warm welcome to you. I want to thank you and to congratulate you for being a part of this. Can I just ask that you wave at me, all right? If it's your first time at any event of the Elevation Church, it's your first time at any event of the Elevation Church, can you just wave, wave, wave? I want to skip your hands. Let's put our hands together for these wonderful people. Can you give them a round of applause? Very, very, very resounding round of applause. Can I ask you to just do one more thing for me? Um, just, just keep your hands up, all right? And of course, if you're sitting next to someone who is interacting with us for the first time, can you shake their hands? I want you to shake their hands. I want you to welcome them and make them feel very loved and very warmly welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to say to you, thank you very much. This is the Elevation Church. Um, we have just an assignment on that God, and that is to make greatness common. Um, and God has sent us on this assignment, you know, irrespective of geography and location. And we go anywhere and everywhere that God has sent us to. And we ask you to please come along. And be a part of this journey with us, all right? Um, what we can promise you is that when you, when you interact with us, okay, um, God will give you the grace, all right, um, to find family and to find love. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what I want to do is this, right? So, so we, have, we have a gift for you. So if it's your first time, can you just keep your hands up, right? We have a gift for you, right? Um, it is not physical. It is digital, right? So someone is going to give you this card. Real quickly, all right. Um, can I have my guest welcome team people just go around very quickly? I wanted to pass out these cards, all right. Um, so, so this card that you have in your hands, right, gives you access um, to about six gifts from the Elevation Church, right? I think about five or six gifts. What you need to do when you get home is to scan the barcode. Yeah, scan the barcode. It will take you to it will take you to a site where you can have access to those gifts, including a very powerful book, right? Um, from our global lead pastor. Right? Can you put your hands together for our guests one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. What I also want you to do, right, is what I want you to do is to please make sure that you um, you interact with us online, okay? Um, our social media handles are displayed at the back of the card, and of course, that of our lead pastor is also displayed at the back of the card. And I promise you that from time to time, you will hear from us, um, you get the opportunity um, to, to be blessed with the content and the resources that they're going to receive from the Elevation Church. Has anybody gotten a card yet? Everybody will raise their hand, everybody. Is anybody still waiting to get a card? Okay, thank you very much. Can we put our hands together one more time? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, I want to bring on stage a very wonderful um, gentleman, okay, who I've grown to know and grown to love, you know, over, the, over, over a number of years. Um, and his name is Fola Binu. Yeah, he's an, he's an internationally acclaimed gospel singer, got, um, a songwriter, and worship leader, all right? Um, he released his first single in 2015. Um, he's a trained aquaturist, okay, with an MBA in international business. You know how Pastor Godman said we have to get multiple ladders. That's what he's done. Um, and of course, he has blessed the world with powerful and popular, popularly embraced songs through his albums, his extended playlist, and singles, all available on popular streaming platforms. Can you put your hands together this evening as we receive this? Wonderful ministry of Fala Binwell. Thank you very much. God bless you. All right. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, so, so for, forgive me. Um, um, I'm just because um, call that music needs to leave. Uh, Pastor Goodman would like us to take a few pictures. All right. Just, just, just please permit me. One, two minutes. All right. Um, we're going to do that before. Um, before Falabi sings, and then we will, we will get out of your way. Thank you. Sound check, one, two. Can I have the reverb back on? Thank you. Amen. One, two, one, two. Amen. Um, I just want to acknowledge and celebrate my pastor. Can we all just celebrate Pastor Godman? <laughs> Um, and of course, the Elevation Church, it's such an honor. You know, 
Um, I just remember seven years ago when I joined the Elevation Church. Can you imagine how small and, uh, you know, I was? Uh, but I found my voice at the Elevation Church um, serving. Yeah, please, you can go ahead and celebrate. Amen. And I just want to just publicly just say thank you, sir. Thank you to the Elevation Church. It's an honor to serve with this house and just to see how, you know, there's just so much growth and just that genuine love. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So um, there's a lot of talk around discovering purpose and just maximizing your season. And um, I feel like the appropriate song to do right now is a song called In Control. And um, In Control, I wrote In Control like a month ago. And it was just a brief season where I was feeling down. I was feeling low. And God reminded me and said, whenever you're feeling low, just remember I'm in control. Uh, so hold your head up high. God is on your side. All right? So that's my encouragement to you tonight. Amen? Amen. And when you're feeling low, low, just remember God is in control. When you're feeling down, down, down below, just remember God will never let you go. Who never let you go. Who never let you go. Hold your head up. God is on your side. Hold your head up. Who never let you down. Hold your head up. God is on your side, oh joy, oh, yeah, cause if he dresses the leaves with beauty and splendor, how much more would he clothe you, how much more would he clothe you, and if he wants he's over, Every sparrow, how much more does he love you? How much more? Come on, sing it out. If he dress, if he dresses the ladies with building splendor, how much more would he clothe you? How much more? And if he watches, if he watches over. Every sparrow, how, how much more? How much more? And if he dresses the leaves with beauty and splendor, how much more would he go? How much more would he go? And if he watches over every sparrow. How much more does he love you? How much more does he love you? Oh, Jairo, you are enough. Jairo, you always enough. And you say, and I will be content in every circumstance. Oh, child, you are enough. God is in control. My God is in control. Yahweh is in control. Yes, 
is in control. Thank you. God bless you. All right, can you put your hands together and one more time? If you were truly blessed, um, if you have found your voice, or if your voice, if the volume of your voice has increased, can you put your hands together for Jesus? Thank you very much. Um, Femi, Femi, we're not, you know, yeah. Okay, so, so because we're sort of behind on schedule, right, um, we're not going to do the Q&A session anymore. I apologize, right? Um, don't worry, the next time that we do um, find your voice, right, next year, by God's grace, you get the opportunity. To, if I, before then, right, we can engage um, you can engage with us, you know, on social media. Um, just ask us your questions on social media. We'll find ways to be able to um, respond to them, number one. Number two is that, like Pastor Godman mentioned when he was speaking, um, Find Your Voice is not an event, yeah? It is, it is, it is a movement, okay? So Pastor Godman is going to be doing multiple things um, in the months and the weeks to come um, on social media and in different cities of the world. We are going to have live events like this, okay? Um, London has been privileged to be the host of the first edition of Find Your Voice. Want to put it get out okay so we're going to have find your voice you know events in different parts of the world and and it is my assurance not just prayer it's my assurance you know that our voices are going to so reverberate that when we have find your voice in whether it's australia or india or toronto you will go and tell your story of how this edition triggered you and made something happen in your life in new dimensions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, um, so right about now, we're going to bring the event to a close. Okay, um, and so two things we're going to do. I'm just going to say a word of closing prayer. We're going to rise together on our feet, and we're going to pray together. And of course, um, I want to ask everybody who served, everybody who has been a part of the planning committee, everybody who has served one way or the other, everybody who has hosted today, can you please stand? Can you stand? I want you to stand wherever you are in the auditorium. Can you stand? Ladies and gentlemen, can you please put your hands together for these wonderful people? I want you to put your hands together for these wonderful people. Every, we, have, we, 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 we did this in just about six weeks, and God was with us. Um, people, people, there were days that people prayed, you know, people did, people did all kinds of stuff. And I want you to please put your hands together for this amazing, amazing, amazing team. God bless you, everybody. Thank you very much. All right, so, so everybody who was served, okay, what I want you to do immediately, we finish. I want you to make your way to the front, right? And we're going to just take one picture with Pastor Godman. I want you to, so anybody who is outside, can you please help me gather? People who are outside, um, we're done registering people, so just let them to come in. Everybody, wherever you are, those who are in the green room, everywhere, people who are backstage, just make sure that you make your way to the front. Okay, just going to take one picture. With, with Pastor Godman and, and Mr. Hoshiga, and then we're going to exit the room. All right? So, shall we rise on our feet this evening? Okay, so um, I'd like to extend to you an invitation um, to visit us at our London Expression. And of course, if you're in Manchester as well, um, we meet every Sunday at um, Double Tree by Hilton at Angel. That's where we meet, 10 a.m. every Sunday. That's where we are all the time. I want you to please um, be a part of our meeting from time to time, um, irrespective of where you live. And of course, if you find yourself in Manchester, Mary Sickle um, Building at Salford University. That's where we meet every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Please join us, all right? Um, so, I want to put your hands on your chest and just say, my voice is loud. I'm a person of influence. The grace of God is propelling me. The power of God is making way for me. I am excelling. I am doing great things. And I'm breaking through glass ceilings. Hallelujah. Let's take the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. All right. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Please, everybody who's served, can you come to the front real quick, very quickly, very quickly. I want everybody to please come to the front. Everybody, everybody, whether you're wearing a t-shirt or not, please find your way to the front real, real, real quick. Um, whatever way that you served, I want you to come quick, 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 quick. Everybody from backstage, please come to the front.